Welcome to Dwarven Forge. This is everything you need to know about our terrain in 60 seconds. Ready? Let's go. We hand sculpt our pieces for maximum detail and artistry, infusing passion into every millimeter of our work. Everything is available beautifully hand painted so you can start playing right away. Or you can choose unpainted to paint everything yourself. Our pieces are completely modular so you can use the same sets to create a new adventure every time. Most pieces have embedded anchor magnets that affix to our terrain trays for secure building and for revealing rooms as your players discover them. We create everything out of Dwarvenite, our top secret PVC formula that's nearly indestructible. We pack our pieces with as many features as possible, such as swappable LEDs to quickly change the look of your scene. We offer magnetic accessories to add flavor or increase the danger. A one-inch tactical grid is sculpted into our floors, hidden in dungeon flagstones, natural rocks, or sticks and plants. In addition to sculpted pieces, we make terrain trays to use as a vibrant graphic base for your build. We offer a range of environments, including dungeons, caverns, cities, castles, sewers, forests, mountains, streets, burrows, ice, and hellscape. And that's just the beginning. We have a passionate fan base who can tell you all about it. And that's everything you need to know about Dwarven Forge in 60 seconds. The games we play are the stories we create. The fortress doors swing open. Every story is unique. And the sound of war drums rises. Sometimes our stories come to us when we least expect them. We need to be ready no matter where inspiration strikes. And sometimes our stories are told over great distances. No matter where your journey leads you or how your story is told. The games we play are the stories we create. Sirenscape can help make yours epic. Sirenscape is searchable, fast, and customizable from any device with no need to pre-install any sound. Adding epic atmosphere to your game has never been easier. Hello, I'm Alina Lee. I'm a level four sugar gnome wizard. I love the support the Discord community gives each other and their willingness to help all players. And I truly look forward to playing every day. So come join us. Hello guys, I'm Kostash Morach, fourth level human druid. Uh, dudes. Uh, what is the best thing in our community? They receive everybody. They help everybody. And during these difficult times, a place where you can be accepted and play as much as we play and has a little part of our anxieties and suffering going away from us is something and a place really special. So, sorry for not having, like, the best English of the world, but that's it. I love our Realmsmith Discord and our crew and everybody else. Everybody else. Join us. It's really awesome. I'm Noggins, a level 7 satyr druid of dreams. I'm Rico, a level 18 Aracocra monk of the sun. And I am Rorschach, or you can call me Rory. And I'm a level three College of Creation bard. And in a few words or less, 
Realm Smith is a community that really keeps me on my toes. The role play that happens within the Discord server is some of the best I've ever had the honor of partaking in, and the community truly cares about each other. And it's such a wonderful place to be. So join us. Hi everyone, I'm Darby and I play Tyel, who is a level 15 half elf ranger on the Realmsmith Discord server for Into the Mist. And one of the things that I really love about this community is that it's a community. There's so many people that genuinely care about you. There's so many different characters and stories to be told. And I love that I can honestly just escape for however long I want to into this world. Um, and so, yeah, I hope you'll join us. Hello, my name is Niall and I play Barf Battlebrain, a level 10 Dwarven Champion in the Into the Mist Realmsmith Discord. The reason I like the Discord so much is it gives me the chance to have fantastic roleplay opportunities with people from all across the globe and I've made many friends whilst doing so. So come and join us, it doesn't matter where you're based, there's always a home for you here. Good luck, hope to see you soon. Hello, I am Elder Sidivar Baba Negra. Level 10 Eldritch Knight in Friendly Camp Weirbear. I am also Sid Jok Lam, Master of Fortune to the Plank King, and Blood Muzzle, Thorn in the Side of Camp Gakis. For those of you that know me in the real world, I'm John, and proud to be a member of the Smith Guardian team. But enough about me, down to why we are truly here. And that is celebrate Realmsmith and the community. No family they have managed to grow over the last year they truly have created a safe haven for all doesn't matter if you're a full-time gamer part-time clicking math rock roller or just new to role play full stop whatever your background time zone or interest you will find like-minded individuals to adventure with and create your own tales whilst enjoying the dungeons and dragons experience so the Discord platform and live streams from Realmsmith really have already helped forge so many tight friendships, a real sense of camaraderie and a place to call home. If you told me a year ago I'd be moderating streams with the likes of the amazing Neurological, Critical Bard, Matthew Lillard, even Luke Gygax himself, I'd have laughed at them. And laughed harder still if it suggested I'd be writing content for consumption across multiple time zones. But testimony to what Realmsmith have built it's now a reality. So the big thing is, what are you waiting for? Come join us and start your journey. Hey everyone, welcome to episode three of Into the Mist. It is our Curse of Strahd campaign. Just gonna go through a couple quick announcements. Um, I've been trying to go through them quicker. Uh, we've been getting comments about them being too long. So we're trying to we're trying to chop it up, chop it smaller so we can get to the action. Thanks to Dungeons and Dragons for creating this incredible game uh, that we know and we love and we play on a regular basis. Uh, we wanna thank our three main title sponsors. First off, of course, I want to thank Beetle and Grimms uh, for the incredible uh, boxed adventures that they create for our community. Uh, I want to thank them for their support. If you want to check them out, you can go to beetleandgrims.com. Uh, Matthew Lillard has joined us in the role of Victavio on a number of occasions. We want to thank them for his time and for the awesome... Um, uh, boxes they give us for giveaways. It's really awesome. I want to thank Hero Forge. Hero Forge is an incredible online miniature designer creator. You can also create um, avatars for your characters, full color. Uh, they're awesome. Check them out at www.heroforge.com. All of our player characters have been created using Hero Forge, as well as a bunch of little creatures that I printed that we didn't get to use last week that maybe we'll get to use tonight. Maybe, possibly, we'll see. Uh, also want to thank Sirenscape. Sirenscape is another online tool for 
adding uh, ambiance and sound effects to your game experience. Uh, they support a number of different tabletop games, um, including Dungeons and Dragons. So you can check them out at www.sirenscape.com slash Realmsmith. That will let them know that we sent you. And you can also check out all the content that we've created for them by searching for Realmsmith in the search bar. I want to thank all of our product sponsors, WizKids, uh, Dwarven Forge, Mithril Armory, who is, as usual, um, sponsoring our Natural 20 animation, which will appear every single time somebody rolls a Natural 20. It looks like that. There you go. That, that works. Um, and D&D Beyond, of course, uh, for powering all of our character sheets and our encounter builder and all of that awesome stuff. Announced last week that I will be at D3 at C. Um, very excited about that. It is a D&D uh, cruise that will be happening in March. You can check them out at d 3 at C.com. Um, cabins are going really fast. Myself, Omega, and a number of other amazing DMs will be there, as well as some of our cast. Dave has already uh, announced that he will be there, uh, and I will be running uh, awesome, potentially Curse of Strahd-esque experiences um, and you'll be able to play with some of our cast members uh, there's even talk of us doing a live um, one shot with the cast of into the mist so that will be amazing as well so stay tuned for more information about that if you aren't part of our discord definitely check it out uh, it's an incredible opportunity for you to get on just chat rpg stuff tabletop stuff and DD stuff uh, and as well as everything realmsmith but if you're interested in diving into our patreon uh, and um, Discord role-playing channels. Join Patreon. You can add yourself at whatever tier uh, works for you, and then you can play as a Vistani in our community. Right now, we're working on something really incredible that we're launching, I believe, tomorrow, today or tomorrow. I have to check. They'll put it in the chat. But um, we have automated the ability to collect resources. So you don't have to track them on your own anymore. As soon as you collect a resource, it gives you... Uh, that number on your character. So that information about that will be rolling out soon. We're looking at automating a lot of those processes. That's a big thing that we want to thank our Technomancers for putting together and our Smith Guardians, of course, for managing it. Um, it's amazing. But you can craft, you can do encounters. We're releasing new quests this month. Um, and we just released the new Guide to the Vistani. So check it out uh, and join at whatever tier it makes sense for you. What's that? What's live after the stream? The automation will be live after this stream. So you will be able to collect resources when you, I think it's bang, collect. Uh, so exclamation mark, collect. And when you do that, it will add one resource per day per long rest to your character. Um, and it will, it will track that automatically now so you don't have to do it on your own. It's pretty amazing. It collects how many resources you have. And then we're going to automate the crafting side of it as well. So that when you have enough resources, you can craft. It'll count your crafting days. It's amazing. It's awesome. All rolling out very, very soon. Uh, and because of that, I want to thank our Smith Guardians and our Realm Watchers for all the work that they do on our Discord. Uh, it's thankless, but they create all of the uh, quests and awesome content that we have uh, along with Julian, who is part of our uh, narrative uh, plot team as well. Uh, we do have merch. That's a great way to support the channel. Under the videos, you can check it out in our merch store. Um, and this Thursday, we will be having Aftermath. We didn't have it last week. We will have it this week. Um, and that is when some of our cast will join us for a semi-spoilerific talk about this episode, the things that I was thinking, the things that the cast were thinking while uh, they played the session. If you like what you see today, consider subscribing and sharing. Follow us on Twitch. And without further ado, let us venture into the mists.
I love Julian Kanko. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I love Julian Kanko too. Thank you, Julian, <laughs> for we all? producing tonight. I uh, also want to thank Lauren Urban for joining us for this session Hi. and for the last session. Mm. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to actually congratulate Adam again for his uh, nuptials two weeks ago. He got married. I'm very, very excited for him, and he is out doing married things. So uh, Lauren has joined us in the meantime. Um, awesome. Last we left you guys, um, you had been called and beckoned back to Velaki. Uh, by Erwin Martikoff, um, the leader, or one of the leaders of the, um, oh my gosh, I totally just blanked, Order of the Feather. Um, and uh, there has been some upheaval within Velaki. Uh, the Burgomaster, Velakovic, um, has been dethroned, and uh, the current person kind of in charge is someone by the name of Lady Vokter, Fiona Vokter. Um, and Erwin believes that her intentions aren't all that wholesome, aren't all that in the best interest of Barovia. And even though the people of Velaki are a lot happier, um, they seem to be um, happy with the change in, in leadership um, because uh, Velakovic used to force these festivals, as you remember, onto the people of the town to keep them happy. Um, people are fed up with it tired of it, they're happy, but he believes that she is actually allied with Strahd. He doesn't have proof and he needs proof. So we asked you to try your best to infiltrate the Burgomaster's mansion, which is now under kept under guard by the Vokters to find any information that you might find regarding uh, her allegiance to Strahd and some of the suspicions there. Uh, you split Forces, Esmeralda, Travas, and Muriel went to the Burgomaster's mansion to scope it out. Travas, having successfully scaled the walls and looking into one of the windows. Sterling and Falfer spent some time talking to locals and found a guard that actually used to work at the, at the Burgomaster's mansion who is not happy um, with uh, this current scenario and shared some information regarding the layout of the mansion. Noggins took some time to dig into his dreams to find some answers regarding what might be coming and what difficulty or uh, dangers might await the party. Um, through a vision, finally saw a young boy with black hair with a shock of white through it who delivered a daunting uh, message. Um, and that is where we left the party last. Noggins, you come out of your dream having experienced and heard what you did. Uh, what do you do? Um, he's like sweating. Uh, that was a different dream than he expected, and he doesn't know how to interpret it. Uh, he doesn't know if that boy is literal or what that could mean. He's going to wait until Falfer and Sterling get back. Um, just kind of sit with that for a moment because that was weird. Okay. Um, Falfer and Sterling, you, uh, in speaking to the guard, gain the information that you could. Um, what do you do? You think we should uh, go back? Yes. Yes. We should try to draw a diagram of what we've learned. Yes, I have uh, I have uh, written most of it down, so I think I'm I'm ready to uh, to share it with the, the crew. Uh, I just return then. Okay, and Muriel and Esmeralda and Travas, Travas, you kind of head back to the group, having sidestepped the guards. You weren't noticed, um, and you kind of all meet under a tree nearby uh, the mansion. What do you do? Relay what I saw. Um, okay. I saw a bedroom, a teenager's bedroom. Maybe mm. when we draw the the magic door, we can enter in there. Is that on the second floor where you scaled the the wall. Okay. That's right. I mean, we can try to enter there. At least it'll be less noticed by the guard that's circling the the house. But mm. maybe it would be less conspicuous. You but saw... also, well, 
dangerous to climb the house. Very much so, yes. But... But don't you just paint no... a door somewhere and it can go into another door? Yes, Shouldn't but we now paint there's climbing involved? their bedroom door on the ground and go through mm. it? Doesn't that... No. It's not a portal. It it's works. just a... You just make a door? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, from what you understand, if you if you paint an object, it becomes the object that you painted. So if you paint a door mm -hmm. and a wall, you can use that door to get into through that wall. Yes. Were any of the You'll windows? You'll have to open? climb. I don't understand magic, anyways. Um. Were any of the windows open? Mm, uh, no. <laughs> uh, did that window open? Uh, you said there was a stained glass window. Or was a lead glass yep. window lined window? Um, yeah. Th does it? Did it? Does it? Did I notice hinges? <laughs> um, on there was one window, and yes, it seemed to be hinges on the outside, so it swings out. But it, it wasn't uh, open or ajar or anything like that. There, there are hinges. It does open, but I don't know if I can open it. Mm. And I saw a strange blue flashing in the front room as well. And what do you mean flashing? Just to be clear, it was a a almost like a singular almost like a like a like a flash from a from a from a lens, like a, like a, flash, like a flash from a camera. From um, a camera. And it was in the top <laughs> floor of this of this mansion. If we can bring up that image actually, Julian, so yeah, we can was... see it real quick. Um, but it basically there's a single window in the front of the build oh sorry, there's two windows at the front of the building up top. Mm -hmm. Um, sorry, one sec, let me just <clears throat> absolutely confirm that. Um, yes, so those two windows lit up with a singular flash, almost like a flash from a camera. It is dark in those windows, it's not lit the way it is here. And there are only a couple windows, as I mentioned, in some of the more general areas, public areas that have light as if um, being lit by a fire, but all of the rooms are kind of dark, including the room you were looking into. I feel like it would be safer to enter a room that was darker. If we're entering into a well-lit room, we're going to be seen by everybody. But the bedroom, the bedroom was dark that, that yes. I went up to. Yeah, the second floor bedroom was dark, yes. Okay. I, I could climb up again and drop a rope. That could work. Maybe. Also, you said it was a, a teenager's room? Yes, but it was empty. Maybe it is the room of the boy that's missing. That's what I was thinking. Empty as in no person, but still stuff. Still bed, dresser. Right. Okay. Hmm. Can I get, uh, what are your three passive perceptions? Oh, 20. That's not good. Wow. 16. Okay. 14. Okay. Um, Muriel, you sense, you get the sense of being watched. Actually, in fact, all three of you get the sense of being watched. Very clearly. Travas, you get you just get the feeling. As Merelda, you get the sense that it's coming from a certain direction. Mira, you know exactly where it's coming from. And across the way, across the road, in a um, little alleyway between two townhomes in this side of town, um, you notice a darkened figure inside the alleyway kind of peering out in your direction. All you, all you see is a silhouette. Humanoid between five and six feet. I just gonna put my mouth over Travas, put my hand over Travas's mouth, put my other hand over his head, and just kind of turn his head in the direction of where I saw this from. Okay. I, just go, I, I can't speak here. And I'm gonna intentionally not look in that direction as, as <laughs> the two of them kind of take a moment to look, so not all three of us are looking in the same direction. Yep. And and she'll say, uh, one person in the alleyway. Uh, between five and six feet humanoid. I can't make out their face. Might just be curious. And as soon as you kind of take a look, look, glance again, the person's gone. We should probably head back. And just to be clear, this this wasn't one of the guards that we saw guarding the the mansion or circling the mansion. This was a different alleyway. Yeah, with your high passive perception, it was, yes, it was a different alleyway across the street 
watching in the general direction of you, you could tell, again, just a silhouette. It was dark, um, but it didn't seem to be an armored silhouette. Okay. Or at least not heavily armored like a guard would be. Or more heavily armored, I should say. I agree. We should get out of here while we're still mostly unnoticed. I don't think that was a guard, but I don't like being watched. I nod my head and I nod Travas's head <laughs> <laughs> for him. It's good. <laughs> good. Very good. Okay. Yeah. That's not creepy at all. And yeah, let's head back really quick. Okay. Um, you all head back to the Blue Water Inn, and you all meet again in your room. Um, the uh, three of you end up being the last people that, that walk in just after Sterling and Falford join Noggins again. Uh, as, as we're heading back, can I just be really cautious about if we're being followed? Yep, give me a perception check. Sure. Uh, 14. Mm. Um, you don't get the sense that you are. Okay. Ah, good. Come, have a seat. We have some. Uh, we have some information for you. That's good. Oh, Did good. you discover anything while you are out? Yes, tell them to us. <laughs> when we got to the mansion, I climbed up to the second window. They have guards at the front and at the back, and one that walks around every five minutes. When I got to the second floor, I found the room of a teenager that was empty. And I think it might be Viktor Ma Malakovich. <laughs> I think it might be his room. Hmm. But I also saw a very strange blue flash in the upstairs window. And that, I don't know what it was. Noggins immediately stares at you when you say that. <clears> hmm. <throat> So here is basically the outline and I kind of like, as he's saying this, I take out a piece of paper and I draw, it was two windows, one in the front, two stories, two windows in the front with the door, four windows, two on each side with a center back door that leads into a kitchen. And we saw that the first floor entrance to the left was a parlor. Yes, it is. Uh, it, it's very similar to what uh, we were told by this disgruntled guard downstairs. He said uh, he did most of his work on the ground floor, front and back exit, gardens in the back where they collect most of the produce. Uh, they have four staff members, a maid, a cook, a lady in waiting, and a butler. Two of them are missing. Uh, the son he kept to himself is maybe who you're talking about. His name is Victor. He is not seen very often on the main floor always tended to stay upstairs. There is a front foyer, a long hall that extends through the middle of the estate, a variety of doors off of that one hallway. Uh, I remember maybe he, or he remembers rather, saying that there's five or six do doors down that hallway. Uh, never really had a person go into those doors. He had no, no reason for going in there. Uh, what else did he say? Oh yes, he did know that the kitchen had the back entrance. So that's the back entrance goes to the kitchen. And the four windows on the south side and uh, two, two on the north, like you were saying, Travas. And then uh, the kitchen starts in the south, goes halfway up the estate and, and ends there. And the Baroness would have lots of tea and drink guests in her parlor. And then the parlor is uh, the door to the left, just inside the main doors. So, uh, I'm sorry, I just, gotta, I just gotta applaud your <laughs> note-taking. This is the first that was amazing. of our campaign. I realized I, I was not say, there for the other thing. That it made me really happy because as he was speaking, I was looking at my notes like, yeah, yeah. It's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Uh, Yay. I was not there for it. All the notes. <laughs> yes. So I suspect if we have uh, a way of getting in, using, uh, I, I don't know what we would use. Were we there for the conversation about, were we all there for the paints conversation? I don't think so, right? No. Oh, I thought we were. Were no. we? We were. Just we were, the three of you the were room talking room about the paints. Left. Sorry, I you talked about the paints yeah. before you left, and then you guys talked about them left. while you were there. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, uh, yes. So if we do use the paints to get in, uh, my suggestions would either be uh, going 
uh, and finding out the, the, the guards um, kind of layout, making sure we go in via one of the rooms that we know exists. <laughs> Otherwise, we will end up in a locked closet, <laughs> which would be bad. Well, I was thinking that I could just climb up to the second floor and drop a rope for you to climb up. That may be better. That could be true. You painting, yes. painting takes a long time, and if this guard comes around every five minutes, then I, don't I think can we'll deal have with the guard if necessary. But there were other guards. They would notice if this one is no longer circling the building, right? No, I would make sure they keep circling. Okay. There is I can make people have different dreams. That At least very useful. It's very useful. It's not, I don't like to use it a lot. A lot of people from my home did it kind of really nilly, and it's kind of mean. But if necessary, then yeah, I can make sure that they are charmed as long as I want them to be. Wow, it's very useful. So then, shall we do it? And Travas, if you're unable to do the, it would be great to see you climb up. Uh, no, 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 you know, uh, that's not the case. Uh, I mean, perhaps if that does not work and you're still a junior adventurer, then perhaps I would use the rope trick, you know, to get up there. But we can see how it goes with your rope climbing skills. I, I don't know that the window will open. Yeah. What is that? Oh, there's one way to find out. Smashy, smashy. No! Oh, no, no! Yes, no! We don't want... No. Uh, Careful uh, opening. We want to not draw attention to ourselves. Can we use the paint instead of painting a door or or an entrance that would be different from the facade of the house? Can you use the paint to just make sure the window unlocks? Or, yes, perhaps a handle on the outside of the window. Yes. Yes, that could work. Yeah, let's try that. There is um, another thing, though. Oh. We did see someone, not a guard, that seemed to be watching. Was it the so devil himself? From the building? No, from an alleyway. From the building. Hold on. Back in Gakis a while back, I felt like we were being watched. I don't know if it's the same being, but it did not feel malicious at that time. I couldn't tell, but if there is somebody following us, we have to be very careful heading back. Um, yeah, we might have to be more careful than that. Um, while you all were gone, um, I didn't really know what to do because I'm not really, uh, uh, one to like sneak around and stuff. Without not without my magic at least, um, so I decided to um, to uh, go into one of my dreams and and uh, and see or try to get a a hold or a, uh, understand what we might face um, when we go tomorrow. And unfortunately, I was in a maze and I didn't really understand that maze. I kept getting lost. I saw Travas at some point, but I don't know why I saw them. Uh, but uh, I followed Travas and I got to the center of the maze. I saw a boy. It, it, it wasn't Travas at that point. Um, and he had black hair with like a little bit of white, um, like, like, like weird, like, like he's too old, but he's young. Um, and, and he asked me if I heard something and, I was confused because there was a lot of like um, electricity and stuff going up around me, like 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 flashes and stuff. Um, but when he he stopped me, and he said it's the sound of inevitability. But I don't really know what that meant. And then I woke up. You have prophetic dreams. Yeah, I I am um, more attuned with the dream and. The, the 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 metaphysical I guess uh, versus actually being attuned to like trees and things though I am still naturally attuned to trees and things that's fascinating mm. the, the, bo the boy you saw is it possible that that was the the, the missing son Victor 
I don't know why he would say the sound of inevitability is all around. That's kind of creepy even for a child. So I don't know. Um, Jay? Yep. Does the description of the child match Sterling? Boy Sterling? No. No, okay. Does Can I ask the same question? What about someone else? Does the description of the child match what we know of Victor from past descriptions? So is he... Like, is it a boy or is he, is he a teen? Like where- Teenager. Where is he... You teenager. understood. I think, I think Erwin told you he was a teenager. I don't think he gave you a, a description. Uh, Muriel, you would know that uh, in hearing this, that Victor does have like raven black hair with a, sh a shock of white through it. And just for clarification, when we talk about a teenager, are we talking like on the lower end, 13, 14, 15, or are we talking like 18? Uh, like 15, 16. Okay. That that does sound like Victor. I don't know that many people who have black hair with a shock of white in it. Uh, hmm. The son was the older side of teens, though, like 15. Did he like books? He had a book. It was bound in leather. Uh, do I know that, DM? Uh, history check. Hmm. Could I, and in, in, in the dream, did I get a look at, was there anything on the book or was it just like a leather book? Just a leather non-district book that you can okay. see. Well, uh, it didn't say like the ultimate guide to any of the world? Yeah, didn't no, say no, that? nothing like that, no. Uh -huh. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Every answer uh, you're looking for for this campaign. Van Richten's yeah. guide to, Lab to Ravenloft? Yeah. 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 That would be <laughs> super useful. Yeah. <laughs> super useful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, sadly, that is a natural one, so I got a two. No, you don't know what, what uh, significance the book would have. Dang. Um, my question. Yeah. They mentioned the blue light. Was the flashing? Was that blue, in the dream? Um. Yes, it was. Okay. And as soon as he you said he heard the flash, you were like, it. It kind of you made that mm -hmm. connection. Um. Whatever light you saw, in in the in the, um, in the house place thing. Uh, I saw that in my dream. It was like electricity, but it didn't feel natural. I don't think. Like lightning. Hmm. Maybe that's something we should be weary about. But I still don't know what he meant. What did he say? Again? Inevitability. Yeah, uh, the sound of inevitability. I don't think inevitability has a sound other than inevitability, but I could be wrong. It has very many syllables to it, so it clearly has a sound. Inevitab inev inevitability. inevitability. That's, that's like seven syllables. Oh, I thought it was six. I lost count. I wonder if... Seven. I wonder if he knows why or how he seven i count it sorry i agree with with the seven i wonder if he if he knew how or why he had gone missing like he knew it was going to happen maybe he set it up oh no we have to kill victor no what what what, what? what? oh i thought why? he was saying you know he said it was gonna happen be, be i'm 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 wrong sorry Okay, I meant only let's... in the sense that he knew his fate and was reaching out to you. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. This well, is not my area of expertise. It's not my area of expertise either. I know dreams. I mean, I can interpret them. There was a. There was a. There was an elf named Joseph. He could interpret everything. I'm not that good. Hmm. It's fascinating, but it is the problem with dreams: is there's many interpretations, and you don't usually find out what is the right one until you do. And then it's too late. One yeah, time. usually it's just me going into the marketplace to buy wolf steaks, and then like I realize I'm naked and I'm embarrassed, and I have to run back to my Vardo, and I can't find my Vardo. It's got blowed up. <laughs> so strangely, I've actually been naked, and it's really not that bad. Once you get used to it, even with your friends around, let's forget <laughs> I said anything that I just said, and figure out how we get into this building, because. I think that is more uh, the point I'm trying to make. And let's forget I was naked. I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to ever forget that, but we can move on. I think getting into the sun's room yes. is good. We can start there. 
chances are nobody's going to be in that room and we should probably search that room anyway if if the son is missing and or maybe dead you're yeah, yeah, good 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 point yes uh, uh, and, we, sorry starting go ahead what we are looking for uh, i imagine it might be in an office of some sort did you glean any any anything about where there may be some sort of an official room it sounds like someone might do that kind of business in a parlor but i don't know i don't i've never lived in a grand mansion like this one i, do, I mean i do now <laughs> which is strange thank you for that all my friends by the way well if the parlor was being used for entertaining would they keep those papers there and even if they did at the time, would they continue to now? Yes. If the guards routinely come in on the first floor, but not the second, that is where I would keep all of my sensitive stuff is I on agree. the second floor. If I was going to keep anything out of people's eyes, it wouldn't be anywhere where people congregate. Yes. That's true. That and you would true. place the guards between uh, the place you want people to be and the place you don't want them to be. So clearly, if we had guards on the main floor, which is what our guard told us downstairs, then it's likely uh, higher up. Mm. Yes. Preventing people from going upstairs. So I do I do like the idea of perhaps going through the second floor, like uh, Travis mentioned, and, and avoiding perhaps whatever guards or uh, time sucks are in the main floor. <laughs> Agreed, actually, for once. Okay. Right. Yes. So, not with you, Falfor. I agree with you occasionally, with, but Travas, I think no, it's, it's quite, logical. It's quite strange. Do we so stick we... with our plan, some infiltrators and others watching? I kind of think we all should go, maybe, if you have the ability to climb up stuff. Oh, that might do, be the hard part. I am too. Well, I'm not that heavy. You're like metal. Ding, ding. Better but, to be spotted and be together than split up and have a guard catch one of you outside. Oh, that actually reminds me. Uh, uh, we don't have to do it right now. But uh, but Sterling, at one point, um, if you can, I, I, I would like to talk to you about a thing and try something. I wanted to talk to you too. So that would be wonderful. Great. Um, can we, Sterling, why don't we take uh, that? My nail is kind of feeling itchy right now. Perhaps we can take it and put it at a vantage point where I, if uh, once we go inside, I can go into a trance and, and still keep watch or the outside of the building. Okay. Um, did any of you see a good place that we could put something like that? Hey, Jay, if we if we were to do something like that, I would want that token to be in the place that has the widest view of the the broadest section of the building. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a map we can look at, or kind of the vantage point you gave us of the of the mansion where we like we could see like all three floors yeah. and the the hall or the um, yeah. the alleyway and stuff. I think that's where I would want to to place that token. Okay, so basically watching the man mansion from across the street sort of thing. Yeah, basically, okay. yeah. Okay, so it would have to be with somebody, though. It has to be, like, you can't just place it and walk away. It has to be in somebody's possession, and then you can see from where they are, is my understanding. Did we give it to an ant? During this trance, you can see and hear from the token as yeah. if you were located where it is yeah, we have while to you are using... Sorry? Don't you have to give it to somebody, though? No. Nope. While you are using your senses at the token's location, you are blinded and deafened in regard to your own surroundings. When the trance ends, the token is harmlessly destroyed. It doesn't say anywhere that I have to give it to someone. Okay. It just says, eerie token, remote viewing. Okay, I'll look into that. Okay. So we want to make sure that nobody is watching us from outside while we are inside? Not just that having somebody on the outside who can make sure that when we go to leave it's safe to leave i mean noggins how long does your charm on a guard work um uh mm, time is weird but like um 
maybe as long as it takes for you to have um, a nice meal um, and then sit for a while and then and then go to the restroom and then sit for a while and then go to your to, to, to your room. It's about that long. Um, I think that's like a lot of minutes. Hours? Really helpful. One, 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 one of those. One, oh, one hour. Okay. Why doesn't Sterling stay outside then with your nail? And he can watch from outside and tell us through your nail that I, things are I, okay. I fear, um, I read this book once and it was about, um, a bunch of, a bunch of, a bunch of, a bunch of goats and they they ran away from each other there was like three in one area two in the other and the three died and it was because the two weren't with them to like help protect them um and it was called um splitting the party um and we probably shouldn't invoke that book right never heard of that book before so, it was yeah, I it was just a one off thing. I didn't expect to see it too. Someone came from uh, a place called Water Deep to the Feywild with it. It was strange. Sounds very strange and kind of weird. Mm -hmm. And Joel, you're right. It doesn't have to it doesn't have to be in, in somebody's possession. Only if you're communicating does it have to be in their possession. Right. Yeah. But cool. if you do that remote thing, then it it's disintegrates when you're done. That's right? correct. Okay. Yeah. So you basically can only do that once. That's right. In the transfer minute, was it? Yeah, one minute. What so. if what if uh, Nuggins could put your nail on the guard's head, <laughs> so that when you look through it, you can watch him walk around? It's it's not the greatest plan. I mean, while I'm doing this, I I cannot move. I cannot see. It would be so funny. <laughs> it would be funny. Yes, of course. Okay. It's a it's a it's a backup plan at the very best. Uh, okay. <laughs> Why don't we just go ahead with the main plan? I will, uh, in addition, as a precaution, put this thing across the street. And if I absolutely need to use it, then I will use it. But otherwise, uh, it is there as a backup. It what will allow us to see if it's safe to leave at the very least. Exactly. Does it, does, will it be facing the front entrance? Because it would be nice to know while we're inside the house place mm -hmm. thing, if someone walks in or somebody's going to walk in. We can uh, we can certainly place it so that it can do that. Yes. Um. So we're going to, if I'm understanding, we're gonna sneak there. You know, uh, stick to the shadows and stuff. And I'm, uh, if necessary, uh, well, probably it will be necessary. I will try to um, um, put the the guard in a trance that he he's my friend and your friend that he won't say anything about us as he continues his job we're going to try to sneak up to the to, to, to the second floor outside and go through the window um, and then when we get inside i guess we find out from there yes we, we have a we plan oh my dear it's, it's crazy we, we can start researching the kids room maybe there is something there um especially if it would Finding something there would help us find the sun later mm -hmm. and then slowly range out from there. Are we still thinking about doing this at night? Yes, yes. I think should. it would be best. Under the mm -hmm. cover of darkness, for sure. Do, do we, we were just, just going back right now. But that was going to be my question. Do we want no, to go? No, no. We probably, no. Okay. We should make sure we're all truly prepared. But I'm yes. feeling pretty rested right now. How are you feeling? Not wanting to go die at a house that we're not prepared to go to? That we've already been, like, seen at by somebody? All right, all right. Maybe just one more mead and then bedtime. I'm not I just look at Esmeralda right. because I'm waiting for mom to say <laughs> yeah, something. Same here. I right, Sterling. Sterling. <laughs> yeah. We'll it just, wait for if tomorrow. you're a if you're a quiet drunk, go for it. <laughs> but we don't know. Wave waving waving down the uh, 
Well, you, the, you're in the guest room upstairs right now, so you start waving. Well, I'm vision. waving. Yeah. I'm... <laughs> what are you waving at? Like on your way out the door, uh, just like. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm going to go down. I'm going to go down. Who's coming? Who's coming with me? Uh, I'm not all taking right, care I'll of go. him. I'll go. Yes. I'll go. <laughs> one last one. Don't worry. I will take care of him, Esmeralda. <laughs> He'll be fine. Sterling, he's, uh, I've got his back. Okay. He's the one that needs to climb up and unlock that window. Yes. But I yes, did what... a really good job tonight, and I think it was because of the drink I had earlier. That's fine. You just make sure all of his limbs are okay in the morning. Uh, I'll make sure. No what? drunken arm wrestling. That's a thing? No what time thing, are we meeting? No thing where you put like the knives through your finger. None of that. These are things you can do? Oh my God. <laughs> we would have to I leave think by... we're, yeah, like when the sun goes down. Okay. Shall I meet you back here then tomorrow? Sure, yes, Miria. Of course, you have a you have a home here. <laughs> we uh, we of course are staying here at the inn. So yes, let's meet. Uh, uh, by cover of darkness, perhaps at the midnight. Or, sure. That's different from when the sun goes down. So we should probably confirm. Right. A good point. So. I can come here for dinner, and then we can decide from there. Maybe in the intermeaning day, we can find some more information. Specifically, is uh, the Lady Vokter the only person who sleeps now in the mansion? Are there others? Does she have a schedule? Maybe she'll be gone for some, some period of time in the evening. We don't even know who she really is, so maybe finding out how the people like her and what she does and stuff. I don't if, know what you don't know. If we do catch her in her sleep, would you be able to put her in a dream as well? Um, I I could. I mean, it, it all depends on how well um, I can penetrate her mind um, and how, uh, how not well she can um, resist. Uh, it's different for other people. Okay. Like, yeah. But maybe, yeah. Nothing's ever out of the out of uh, out of play. It's just it's sometimes harder for other people. I understand. Okay. So leading up to the point where you turn in for the evening, Muriel, you're going to return to your home in Velaki at this time. Yep. Okay. Uh. Travas and Falfa, you're going down for a drink? Yes. Um, does anybody else want to do anything before you soul. turn in? Do Do we have a fireplace in this room? Well, that is a great question. Can we have a fireplace, DM? <laughs> uh, there is not a fireplace, but it is it warm. It is your game. Yeah. <laughs> There is, there is no fireplace <laughs> in this room. <laughs> but there is warmth. Make it happen. It is some time before bed, I want to go and uh, speak with somebody to see if I can get some of the the ash and uh, charcoal mm -hmm. from from the fire. Okay. Um, enough so that I can the next night put it on myself to dull my shine. Oh, okay. Very good. Mm. Very good. Okay, you're able to collect that. Okay. Sterling, dark mode now. Um, anyone else? Uh, I'll just want to talk to Sterling at some point. Okay, you um, guys can go ahead and do that. Oh, yes. Uh, well, I guess while everybody is like heading out and doing whatever. Um, uh, I don't know if it would be useful tomorrow or not, but I realized a thing, and it could be potentially... Um, well, you know, you think about things and then you dream about those things and you realize those dreams could be reality. So you might as well make it a thing. Um, you have all those. And he like kind of like looks and points and sees like the runes uh, on your equipment and things. You have all those that the, the magic wording stuff. Um, I don't know where it comes from. Uh, I don't really understand it, but I know that it gives you like different abilities and stuff, right? Yes. Yes, it does. Um, would you give me permission to try something really quickly? I want to make sure my druidic 
power and the way I manifest doesn't counteract anything that y- you have going. Sometimes you don't want to mix to match, but I just want to make sure. It's not going to hurt you, I promise. Oh, I trust you. Okay. Um, and I will take out my sickle uh, and um, I will go into my, my pouch and I get this um, this powdered black uh, this this fine powder, uh, and I'll dip some of the uh, I'll dip the sickle the, the tip of the sickle into the powder, and I'll place it on your forehead. Actually, I'll put it exactly where uh, Morgantha uh, scratched the thing in, um, and as it touches you, I whisper some words in Druidic, and it'll kind of seep all over you, um, and kind of spread out and spread and spread and spread, and as it does, you're going to shrink in size as I cast reduce on you. And I go, okay. Okay. It, it worked. It worked. Um, this is what you expected to happen? <laughs> well, yes, right now. But the actual plan is, um, uh, oh, wow, that is really, you're short. Um, uh, the actual plan is you can become bigger on your own. Yes, oh, but what? How would I be a small bird? No, no, I can make you bigger after that. Bigger than my normal big. Bigger than your normal big. Uh, okay. So if we ever need um, a a a a big treant, um, Sterling. Or I guess metal. I don't know what a metal tree would be. Um, a, a big, huge sterling. We we have one. Wow. Yes, Yay. I like this. Um, how and, long will I be small? Oh no, I, I can, I can, I can. It, it just be a minute. Um, but I can, I can, I can stop it in, in any second. Oh, okay. So I haven't stopped it yet. I'm very much <laughs> into this. So I was really interested in um, talking to you as well about your abilities. Uh, okay. N- n- I, I end the spell. Okay, that's not weird. Um, not like talking to a kid. Um, okay. Sorry. Well, for, for a long time, I I suppose the kid had control. So I guess you didn't know that, though. Uh, one of One of one of us is a child. Oh yeah, there's like a lot of voices inside your head, but like not in a weird way. It's just you have a lot of people who are in your in in, in your body thing. Sorry, at this yes. point, Esmeralda, where are you? Just so I'm clear of who's in the room. Um, I would say that I, I haven't left to go downstairs. So if we're all in the same room, I'm in the same room. Okay. Are you guys keeping it hushed so Esmeralda can't hear? Or are you speaking openly? I don't care, but I don't know if you care. Okay. No, Would I? Me. Wouldn't I notice a shrinking yes, sterling? Yes, you absolutely notice a shrinking sterling. And by the way, I can't wait to print and paint Gigantor Sterling. Yep. Uh, this needs to be a thing. Big Sterling is great, but Gigantor Sterling is something I need to do. <laughs> I'll have to sit really close to the. Camera, I'm gonna have like. <laughs> it's gonna be great. <laughs> <laughs> Just suddenly move the camera so it's down below you, yeah. so you look huge. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea. Well. Um, your abilities, you said you can give people dreams? Um, I mean, kinda. I can't really force a dream on, I I guess I could, but that's not the nicer way to do it. But I kinda could? Well, um, only two of us were able to dream, and now all we have are memories of dreams. And the rest of us did not know dreams because we were not organic. I suppose my question is, do you think, do you think maybe I could have a dream? Just one, just one, a good one, I hope. Would it work? What would you want to dream about? Something good, something beautiful that I've never seen before. What is your home like? Is there beauty there? 
It's... Look, look around, like this room, it's kind of plain. It's okay, it's pretty, but it's like pretty in a very um, mon mundane, mon mundane way. Um, if this room was in my home, it would be vibrant, um, shifting color that doesn't need to shift, but can and does because it wants to. Uh, it would be filled with life, um, unafraid by the, um, the influence of, of humanoids that seek to only grow and destroy and gain. It would just be, it would just exist. Um, lots of color, um, lots of light. Still um, scary in its own way because too much of that could be um, a recipe for chaos, but it's, it's comforting. It's, it's, it's home. So As he's saying this, I'm kind of like pressed to digitizing, like just a faint, like lullaby of sounds as he's describing his world. Um, but yes, I could, I think I could, I can give you a dream. E even though I do not sleep. A dream doesn't require sleep. A dream requires a sense of understanding that there is more out there than you could ever perceive. It's a place where you could just be without chains, without being held back, without being told that it doesn't exist. Um, dreams can be memories, but memories influence dreams as, as well. Memories are often painful. I would like to, some, to see something new, something good. It is not Barovia. Um, okay. Let me try to whip something up then. I, I thank you. With all that I am, I thank you. It, it's nothing. And I like wink at Esmeralda for the uh, ambiance. <laughs> It's you still could be going. Small. You could be small too <laughs> if you want, or bigger, but I figured it would be good for. I mean, I'm okay for now. I just. Sterling, I find it very sweet in a way. And I hope you have a good dream. But maybe this will help. And I, as I'm like, I'm very much. There are not very many clear skies in Barovia, but I hope that at some point we can see stars again. And then you very much see like, as the room goes dark, you see very like twinkly lights appear very faintly overhead. I'm going to start doing a thing, but we don't have to worry about it right now. But go ahead and um, uh, set your uh, anything else to happen. But you see Noggins go into like a corner and like start meditating, and you see things starting to shift, but very subtly. And I'll describe it later. Awesome, great. All right, um, you three turn in. Uh, Muriel, you've headed home. Uh, Travas and Falfur, you're tying one on. Um, how much of one would you like to tie? You're uh, muted. Yeah, I would. Um, I'd follow Falfer's lead on this one. Yeah, <laughs> seeing as my constitution bonus is a negative one, <laughs> I'm going to only have one drink, but 
try to sleight of hand like I'm having two or three. Okay. All right. Uh, How are you going to do this? Yeah. Can you pour it in your lap? Pour it in your curly hair? You can give me a sleight of hand check to try and like That's... pretend like you're not. Yep. Okay. Um, that is... Oh, man. It's a, it's a four. It's a four. So a two plus two. Okay. All right. You notice, Travas, that he's not quite keeping up and that he's even pretending like he's drinking and he's not. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's very good, huh? I'm, I'm, uh, oh. Uh, <laughs> I don't know uh, that I could keep up for very much longer. <laughs> I'm going to let it go. Um, that's, that's all right, uh, Falfer. We, you're small. Um, mm. Maybe you just shouldn't have as much. Uh, and I'm young. <laughs> So, do you want to try an arm wrestle? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I don't want to embarrass you. <laughs> uh. I I want to, I don't know. Yeah, I guess I would know what an arm wrestle is. Come on, let's do it. Come on, come on. I put on my hand. Let's do it. <laughs> barely have a crowd. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll look around. I'm fine. I would be a halfling, arm wrestling, and normal human being, and uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll try to get everyone's attention to look um, over at us. Gate performance check. Okay. This, on the other hand, will be a actually or, okay, so or persuasion. Well. Oh, if, persuasion. If you want to be verbose about it, then you can do uh, performance. Okay. Uh, if you want to just kind of get people to look over, you can do persuasion. Um, I. Yeah, I'll do a persuasion. Okay. Damn it. <laughs> I, instead, I'll take my previous roll and do a... No. <laughs> so that's a five. Okay. Oh, yeah, man. yeah, with a five, uh, one guy kind of looks over, one drunk guy looks over, and he's like... And that goes back to his tankard. Um, yeah, Travis, I don't know about this. I don't know. <laughs> okay, fine. Well, one, one go... But if I beat you, here's what I want, okay? Uh, from here on in, you will be uh, carrying my pack if I win. Until, of course, the next time. If I lose, uh, I will um, I will get my backpack. My pack back. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Tongue twisting. Um... What do you say? <laughs> oh. I have to carry your pack. I've got to climb up to a window in the morning. <laughs> okay, okay, fair, 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 fair. Uh, after that, when we are traveling, I'm, I mean, not, not while we are doing adventures, but simply when you'll be my pack boy from when I need to um, have someone carry my package. For how long? I don't understand. Until you beat me next time. I don't think so. <laughs> okay, let's let's go. <laughs> my hand okay. <laughs> Strength <laughs> athletics checks, please. For both All, right. All right. I got a zero for that, so let's see what happens. Oh, that's a 13 oh. for me. That's a three. Okay. Oh! As you start, Falfer, you get a grip, and you're able to kind of twist, and you learned this because your dad and you used to do it, and he used to let you win, but you learned kind of the <laughs> technique, and you start to kind of get him over, and you're about three quarters of the way down. I'm gonna get you to do another strength athletics check, please, both of you. Oh, come oh, on. Oh, yes. Um, okay, same, 13 again. <laughs> 10. Okay, <laughs> you get him down, and you're almost at the thing, and there's like an inch away from the, the end of the table, and you both look each other in the eyes, you're gritting your teeth. Some people are starting to kind of notice now as you're, as you're kind of fighting through it. One last strength athletics check, please. Uh, uh, this is, can I, this can is... I, with the other hand, grab okay, whatever fine. drink is left on the table and like throw it down into my mouth? <laughs> yes. I, uh, <laughs> so when he does that, <laughs> yeah. I'll yell out to the bartender, bartender! I need a shot here very quickly! <laughs> and, uh, and down to the end, I roll an 18. Okay. No! Yep. Oh. That's not good. Oh, natural one. Yeah. Okay. Slam! It was meant to be. I take yeah. that drink, 
He passes it to me. I'm holding him. Yeah. I'm holding my arm down there, just shaking but holding. Yeah. And I take that wig and just pour it back. Oh. Look him in the eyes and go. Ah! <laughs> and you you slam his his fist yeah. down, and it slams so hard, Travas, that that drink that you were in the middle of drinking spills yeah. all over you, just in your hair, yeah. down your tunic, all over your armor, just completely soaked in almost a full tankard of ale um, as, um, you know, your hand engulfed this halfling hand and you're feeling pretty yeah. bad about yourself yeah. right now. Uh, uh, I, I feel my hand like this. Uh, you really got me. And I lunge at him and try to pin him to the floor. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> I do not allow this to happen. Okay, I'm gonna get strength athletics checks too. Actually, it's a grapple check. So um, you do a strength athletics, Travas, and Falfer, you do either an acrobatics or an athletics check to yeah, try athletics and for me. avoid it. And that is another 18. <laughs> I got a 10. Okay, so you, you go to lunge at him and you're starting to feel the drinks a little bit and you kind of slide yeah. across the table and he sidesteps and you basically hit the other wall and you hit the floor. Okay, when uh, he hits the floor, if yeah. he is prone on the ground, yeah. I, will, I will simply <laughs> mount him like a donkey and, <laughs> and, and just be like, everyone, everyone, this is what happens. When you try your luck against a halfling, and then I recognize my skin is not what it once was, and my horns are kind of out and showing, and I'm assuming everyone is confused at my claiming that I'm a halfling. Yeah, well, you're, you're definitely getting a mix of uh, looks. Give me a perception check, Falfer, and, and Travas, you can give me a perception check with disadvantage because you're currently being ridden like a donkey. So that's a 14. <laughs> 14? Well, 12 okay. or worse. It's worse. It's a nine. Okay. So yeah, Travas, you, you don't notice anything. You do notice everyone that's actually laughing currently at the current Good. view. Good, yeah. Falfer, you Thank notice you. that this 50-50. Half of the people, it's Barovia. They don't really care what you look like. Half of them are kind of like taken aback a little bit. Um, but you do get, Falfer, the distinct feeling of being watched by mm. somewhere in the room. Okay. And 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 feel instantly vulnerable. Um, okay. So with that, I'll I'll kind of turn serious on my face to Travas and uh, and grab his hand and try to pull him up from the ground. Okay. And go. Uh, good times are over. Let's go and uh, lead him upstairs to our shared room. Okay. All right. You all turn in for the night. You all get the benefit of a long rest. Um, you wake up the following morning to the sound of crows. Uh, not the, the pleasant birds that you are typically used to in your homelands. Um, what uh, do you all want to do? We don't have to play out the whole day, but if there's key things you want to do during the day, if you want to just skip to the evening, you can do that. Um, the day is yours. I would love to try to use any of my contacts in town mm. or any information I have to find out where the Lady Fiona Vachter might be. Okay. Especially since if she's just taken over the Lordship, there's a good chance she might be out and about meeting people, um, you know, schmoozing and talking to, to people. And I don't necessarily want to interact with her. Yep. But I'd like to not only get a look at her, but basically follow her wherever she is long enough that I could listen to her because uh, I, the, the roguish archetype I am, means my master of intrigue means if I can listen to her for at least a minute, I can mimic her. Mm. So Very I would good. like to spend the day trying to make that minute happen. I like it. Okay. Give me an investigation check with advantage because you are a um, resident of Velaki. Okay. You know the layout of the city. Not my strong suit, but we'll with see. Your contacts. Uh, seventeen. Okay, Ooh. nicely done. Um, with a seventeen, uh, you learn very quickly that uh, Lady Vokter still lives in Vokter House, which is their home. It's their mansion um, that is also in town. She is not staying at the old Burgomaster's mansion. Um, 
you do head over there to kind of watch what's happening. Um, and you see, as you're at the Vokter house um, during the day, uh, you notice one very, uh, one thing in particular, that she has people coming and going out of the mansion on a fairly regular basis. Um, and there is a gentleman who uh, greets them at the door. Um, as they come, they open up the door. If we can actually get a, a view of the Vokter house there, Julian, that'd be great. Um, and as as she, uh, this person greets them, the, uh, he brings the, the, them inside and they meet for a certain amount of time and then they leave. And so she doesn't leave the mansion for hours, but you see multiple gr small groups of people coming and going throughout. Um, let me just give you a quick description of what the mansion is like. Uh, this house seems disgusted with itself. A slouching roof hangs heavy over furrowed gables and moss-covered walls sag and bulge under the height of the vegetation. As you study the house's sullen countenance, you hear the edifice actually groan. Only then do you realize the extent to which the house hates what it has become. And so uh, it's obvious that this house at one time was uh, opulent and and quite well taken care of but you can tell o over time it has been overgrown and not necessarily been taken care of as much as as possible would you like to get closer to the house uh to try and get a, people... a look or 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 a listen yeah um or listen. the people who are coming and going yeah is it what I would expect of a new ruler of this town? Is it business people? Is it other politicians? Or is it something else? Yeah, it's like, absolutely- I recognize who these people are. You recognize some of them, uh, but they seem to be um, town officials, uh, people who have, um, basically people coming to pay their homage almost to kind of the new mayor, um, or at least the mayor um, parent or, or the mayor that is, is currently uh, taking over. Um, and they'll come and sometimes they'll bring gifts. You can see them carrying wrapped gifts or baskets of fruit or things like that to offer. Um, and then they'll leave empty handed. So you imagine that they were things that they were, that were bring, that were being brought to her as a gift. Okay. And, uh, are there any groups of people who would just be like regular townsfolk? Like, um, not, not a person of note but like oh and here's just a collection of town folk here to pay homage and um something that i could possibly slip into a tour group or so yeah um how no so so there isn't necessarily anybody coming through the front door that is of kind of um the the normal sort of um you know uh townsfolk uh um, lay citizen yeah yeah how long do you stay watching until what time? Um, I think, I think I would stay as long as possible, but there's also a lot of being incredibly cautious that I'm not noticed. So I'm probably like posted up somewhere for a little while and then I'd intentionally leave and then come back, but being somewhere else. Um, but I would hang around most of the day trying to get a, a look and a listen at her without having to enter the house. Okay. So people come and go for the most part of the day. There's a bit of a break when you imagine around lunchtime, and there's a bit of a break when you imagine around supper. Um, but other than that, it's almost a constant flow of people coming and going. Um, every once in a while, you'll see a couple guardsmen go inside and come out as well, but there doesn't seem to be any guards patrolling or or protecting this house um, from from the exterior, at least. Um, you, you said you don't want to get closer, correct? Nah, I don't. Okay. I don't need this that much to okay. arouse suspicion. So okay. no, if she doesn't come out, I won't try to go okay. on in. After dinner, um, as it starts to get dark. The guests stop arriving, so nobody after dinner arrives. It's quite quiet. Um, 
But as it begins to, as the sun begins to set, um, you see a couple of people who seem like regular townsfolk. Um, give me a perception check, actually, please. Sure. Ooh, 29. Ooh. Um, you see a couple people, you do not recognize them, but you know that they are just, they seem like normal townsfolk. Um, one is a bit better dressed than the other, um, and obviously with a bit more wealth, but just a common um, townsperson, Barovian. Um, they step up to the east end of the building, which is the back of the building, um, and you see that there is a little vestibule that comes out with a door in it. Uh, and you see them step up and they kind of look around, uh, kind of making sure that nobody's watching. One of them takes a uh, a little piece of twine from around their neck and there's a little key attached to it. And they put the key in the door, they open the door, they both go in and they close the door. Hmm. Okay. But and not through the front door, this is through the back. The back. Yeah. And I'll hang around for another moment or two because yeah. I know at this point I got to get back to everybody. Yep. Uh, those two people don't come back out. They do not. And with a 29, I'm going to say that you can tell that's a cellar door. It's got big rings on it and it's at a bit of an angle as they opened it up and they head down. Okay. Um, yeah, I think at this point I'd go rejoin the others because okay. the probing further is probably going to cause issues yep. and i think i've already got at least one pertinent piece of information for everybody so okay great all right um what do the rest of you do anything throughout the day <clears throat> after getting some water and some greasy food in me um i want to find i want to find esmeralda okay i'm gonna look around. i know i just want to know um if you were to come in if either of you were to come in like very drunk and it was very obvious you would have saw um, Noggins' um, sickle fly in the air and cut through and like a wave of energy goes over you as it casts Lesser Restoration. All right, yeah, you told us you could deal with that. It's like, no, not, mm -mm. <laughs> Immediately your bus <laughs> is gone in for bus when you come in the door. <laughs> uh, where, where, do, where will I find Esmeralda in the morning? Um, that's up to where Esmeralda. Yeah. Um, I would have woken up early and uh, you could probably find me back down getting breakfast. But uh, before I, I have, I have a, a, a specific mission I'd like to go on. Okay. So you meet her at breakfast and all of you kind of eventually kind of come down, but I'm going to say that, you know, you're down there already as Merelda and Travas, you're the first to join her. Okay. At your usual table, kind of off to the side in the little mm -hmm. bay window. So I'll, I'll, I'll bring my, my food over to eat there. And uh, after a bit, I'll say to her, uh, let's go get him. Him who? Strad, let's go get him. Shh, just don't go saying that name around in public. We saw him yesterday in the store. Let's go. Oh, you're talking about the doll? The dummy, the dummy Strad. Oh, jeez. Okay. First of all, you can't just go throwing that name around because people oh, will hear my you. Strad. Okay. Okay. I also, won't... no, you maybe you not want to say that. I... We'll go get your stupid doll, okay? But here's what I would like. I got up early because I wanted to change into something, you know inconspicuous is that what you're wearing now yes what's wrong with what i'm wearing now no it's very inconspicuous for sure i can never tell if you're being sarcastic or if you're being i don't know what to say i don't know what the right thing to say is that's all the time <laughs> <laughs> that's why i never know what to, how to read it your face always just turns red i uh, uh, it's what, it's we'll the get, sun. Go get your dog. Okay. What sun. Well, so why why are you trying to be inconspicuous? Because there's been a dude following us around, and I would like to just if if they are still around and still tracking where we are, I wanted to leave our rooms early enough to where if I could, you know, go Maybe surveying he's a fan. around. 
maybe I don't think so. I don't think that's a thing. I don't. I think so. I, I think, think that's only people... you. No, I think that is literally no. only you. No. I had a friend. No, we'll he he was also a friend. It doesn't matter. Uh, do, so we'll go. We'll get him. We'll, okay, fine. Yes, we'll get your doll. Yes. But okay, but asterisk underline underline. We have to be very inconspicuous about going around town and keep an eye out if you see anything or anybody following us. Uh, of course, of course. Um, hmm. Quick look at my inventory to see if I have inconspicuous clothing listed. Uh, Your clothing's pretty inconspicuous already here in Barovia. Yeah, it's just patchy whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, I'm good. <laughs> uh, is, uh, is there anybody that's fishy looking in the room? Can I look around? Uh, perception check. It's a 10. Uh, not that you can see. Looks like everything is okay. Would I also be able to make yep. a perception check? You can look too. I looked, but you can look. That's fine. 13. Okay. No, nothing. And and it's it's fairly quiet. Um, some people just having breakfast and so on, but it's much quieter than it was the evening before. Okay. Um... I just leave, I leave a note before uh, heading out upstairs, just letting them know my whereabouts and intentions. Okay. So you guys are going to Blinsky's shop. That, right. Okay. All right. Foul for Sterling. Sorry, I lost Noggins. my volume for a sec. Sorry, what was that? Sorry, I lost my sound for a sec. Okay. Um, what was the question? No, I was just asking what Falfer Sterling and Noggins were doing. Oh, gotcha. I'm not gonna. I'm. I'm. I'm just gonna stick around in the, in the in the, the and and just relish in my last night's victory, going from table to table saying, uh, <laughs> "Did you see that last night? <laughs> oh man, so great!" And uh, and that's it. Just okay. like reveling in my small whatever small victory. Yeah. And you're not you're not in any way obscuring yourself anymore. You're happy to be, Hexblood Falfer. I'm, I've got my my hood on. Okay. Um, over my horns. Okay. So yes and no. I'm okay. getting used to my new form. Okay. All right. People seem to be inquisitive, but not necessarily scared. Uh, your, your appearance isn't necessarily scary. It's just different. Cool. Okay. Sterling. Um, I think I probably would be taking time to speak with Noggins uh, and just you know get to know more about his home. Land. If I, if I had a dream, like if it worked, and I saw the the Feywild, I'd probably have questions. I will so. say nothing. He didn't do anything yet. He wants to think on it and understand. Unfortunately, being a war for it's just hard to force you to have a dream. Yeah. Um, even him being a dream druid, so um, he he influenced the area a little bit. Just made it seem um, not completely, but just like the sounds and like the landscape, uh, just a couple of flowers in that nature to just kind of get the senses going a little bit, but he has some things up his sleeve, just not yet. Huh. Okay, and then feeling a, a new kinship with Noggins, still hanging out with Noggins for the day. Okay. Uh, I will say um, uh, during that, he would say, I'm going to go um, downstairs and uh, uh, just kind of hang out. Um, and just keep my and I like wiggle my ears, um, keep my ears open just to see if um, anyone is speaking. I'm pretty perceptive. I just want to make sure. Um, I mean, you all are the dawn bringers. You've done so much already. There's no way in heck, heck, hell, no way in the nine hells that someone doesn't know you're here. So. They don't really know me that well, but I have been traveling with you, but they still don't really know me that well. So maybe while you all aren't there, I might hear some things. Let's get some um, some information. That's good thinking. So in that case, I'm going to sit and basically meditate on the plan that we've got for the night. Okay. Just going through it with the many minds of you know, the different beings uh, and just making sure that there isn't anything we've missed. Okay. 
and Noggins, you're kind of eavesdropping on conversations and, and just gathering some stuff from the common room or, or in town? Uh, uh, in the, I started in the common room, uh, and then I kind of wander around the, the, the general area of the town, not really going into any specific spots. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I definitely start down there. I'm sure people are down there for, for a bit, congregating and eating. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll kind of just wander around. Okay, give me an investigation check, please. I said I'm listening. Why would I be investigating? Oh. <laughs> Guidance. <laughs> Man, that guidance is useful. It's not good. <laughs> no, it's not useful. I wanted perception. <laughs> I was looking around and listening. It's fine. It's fine. No, five. Okay. No. Um, I mean, you hear the general, um, the general disposition of the town is the same as what you've heard already. Most people are actually quite happy with the situation. They're happy they don't have to do these stupid festivals anymore. Um, and that, you know, those that don't, that don't like the festivals aren't um, harmed, actually, by not doing them and not participating in them. Uh, but that's the general feeling right now. A lot of people aren't quite sure about Lady Vokter and the new regime or whatever, but they're just happy to be out from under um, the Burgomaster's thumb. Um, with that... Uh, Travas and Esmeralda, you head out to Blincy's shop, and that is where we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. How? Hello! I'm Alina Lee. I'm a level 4 sugar gnome wizard. I love the support the Discord community gives each other and their willingness to help all players, and I truly look forward to playing every day. So come join us. Hello guys, I'm Kostas Morach, fourth level human druid. Uh, dudes, uh, what is the best thing in our community? They receive everybody, they help everybody. And during these difficult times, a place where you can be accepted and play as much as we play and has a little part of our anxieties and suffering going away from us is something and a place really special. So sorry for not having like the best English of the world, but that's it. I love our Realmsmith Discord and our crew and everybody else, everybody else. Join us, it's really awesome. I'm Noggins, a level 7 satyr druid of dreams. I'm Rico, a level 18 Aracocra monk of the sun. And I am Rorschach, or you can call me Rory. And I'm a level 3 College of Creation bard. And in a few words or less, Realmsmith is a community that really keeps me on my toes. The roleplay that happens within the Discord server is some of the best I've ever had the honor of partaking in and the community truly cares about each other and it's such a wonderful place to be so join us hi everyone i'm darby and i play tyel who is a level 15 half elf ranger on the realm smith discord server for into the mist and one of the things that i really love about this community is that it's a community there's so many people that genuinely care about you there's so many different characters and stories to be told. And I love that I can honestly just escape for however long I want to into this world. Um, and so, yeah, I hope you'll join us. Hello, my name is Niall and I play Barf Battlebrain, a level 10 Dwarven champion in the Into the Mist Realmsmith Discord. The reason I like the Discord so much is it gives me the chance to have fantastic roleplay opportunities with people from all across the globe and I've made many friends whilst doing so. So come and join us. It doesn't matter where you're based. There's always a home for you here. Good luck. Hope to see you soon. Hello, I am Elder Sidivar Baba Negra, level 10 Eldritch Knight in friendly camp Weirbar. I'm also Sid Jok Lam, master of fortune to the Plank King and Blood Moon, thorn in the side of Camp Gakis. 
For those of you that know me in the real world, I'm John, and proud to be a member of the Smith Guardian team. But enough about me, down to why we are truly here. And that is celebrate Realmsmith and the community. No, family they have managed to grow over the last year. They truly have created a safe haven for all. It doesn't matter if you're a full-time gamer, part-time clicking the math rock roller, or just new to roleplay full stop. Whatever your background, time zone, or interest, you will find like-minded individuals to adventure with and create your own tales whilst enjoying the Dungeons and Dragons experience. So the Discord platform and live streams from Realmsmith really have already helped forge so many tight friendships, a real sense of camaraderie and a place to call home. If you told me a year ago I'd be moderating streams with the likes of the amazing Neurological, Critical Bard, Matthew Lillard, even Luke Gygax himself, I'd have laughed at them. And laughed harder still if they'd suggest I'd be writing content for consumption across multiple time zones. But testimony to what Realmsmith have built, it's now a reality. So the big thing is, what are you waiting for? Come join us and start your journey. Welcome to Dwarven Forge. This is everything you need to know about our terrain in 60 seconds. Ready? Let's go. We hand sculpt our pieces for maximum detail and artistry, infusing passion into every millimeter of our work. Everything is available beautifully hand painted so you can start playing right away. Or you can choose unpainted to paint everything yourself. Our pieces are completely modular so you can use the same sets to create a new adventure every time. Most pieces have embedded anchor magnets that affix to our terrain trays for secure building and for revealing rooms as your players discover them. We create everything out of Dwarvenite, our top secret PVC formula that's nearly indestructible. We pack our pieces with as many features as possible, such as swappable LEDs to quickly change the look of your scene. We offer magnetic accessories to add flavor or increase the danger. A one-inch tactical grid is sculpted into our floors, hidden in dungeon flagstones, natural rocks, or sticks and plants. In addition to sculpted pieces, we make terrain trays to use as a vibrant graphic base for your build. We offer a range of environments, including dungeons, caverns, cities, castles, sewers, forests, mountains, streets, burrows, ice, and hellscape. And that's just the beginning. We have a passionate fan base who can tell you all about it. And that's everything you need to know about Dwarven Forge in 60 seconds. The games we play are the stories we create. The fortress doors swing open. Every story is unique. And the sound of war drums rises. Sometimes our stories come to us when we least expect them. We need to be ready no matter where inspiration strikes. And sometimes our stories are told over great distances. No matter where your journey leads you, or how your story is told. The games we play are the stories we create. Sirenscape can help make yours epic. Sirenscape is searchable, fast, and customizable from any device with no need to pre-install any sound. Adding epic atmosphere to your game has never been easier.
Jeez. All right, we're back. Okay, so, uh, Travas and Esmeralda, you are heading to Blinsky's shop. Esmeralda, you said you left a note for them? Yeah, at your just table? to say where we were going and that we were coming back. Okay. In a little bit, hopefully. <laughs> All right. As you head out the front door, um, the sounds of Vlaki um, come to life. Uh, passerbys, Barovians, uh, a lot of them obviously downtrodden, head down, kind of sorting and, and going about their business as you travel a couple of blocks to Blinsky's shop. As you arrive at Blinsky's shop, um, again, you see the cramped shop has a dark entrance portico above which hangs a wooden sign shaped like a rocking horse with a B engraved on both sides. Flanking the entrance are two arched lead framed windows. Through the dirty glass, you see a jumbled displays of toys and hanging placards bearing the slogan, is no flun, flun, is no fun, is no Blinsky. Um, and you do still see the string of Dawnbringers in the window. Um, nice. Right now, um, there doesn't seem to be too many people in the streets. It's still fairly early, but people are passing by as you walk. Uh, Esmeralda, you said that you were wearing um, less conspicuous clothing? Mm-hmm. Okay, so are you trying to hide the fact that you are, in fact, Esmeralda? Yes. Okay. Um, can you give At me... At least just oh, from yeah. passers-by. Yeah. I don't want to just... I don't want to draw the least amount of attention. Yeah, give me a performance check for that. Twenty-three. Okay, twenty-three. Very good. All right, you are standing out in front of the shop. Both of you, I won't ask you, Travas, because you're fairly inconspicuous as as Travas. Uh, so standing out in front, what do you do? Uh, so what do you want to do? Look to, I want to go in and buy. The, I want to go get them. I want to get Is the shop sand. open? Yes, it appears to be open. There's do you have to money to purchase? I have a little Please. bit of money. Um, all right. Um, all right. Uh, so we go in. That's your plan. Right. Go in and actually buy in. it. All right. Okay. I want. To, oh, I want to try him first and see if uh, it's good. Uh, uh, but it's a Belinsky, so it's probably very good. Listen. Word of advice: You're gonna want to haggle like a little bit. So like, whatever it is that you want to pay. You tell him way lower, and then he's going to be like, no, and then he's going to say way higher, and then you're going to come to some sort of middle ground that you're happy with. But don't but, just uh, offer up what he's going to ask for right away. The amount I would like to pay is nothing. Should I go this okay. direction? Go with your heart, Travas. You know what? I'm just, I don't know. All I'm saying is that if you actually want to buy this thing, don't actually pay full price for it, because it is Blinsky. Right, right. Uh, understand. Let's go. Okay. Right. Music. As you enter uh, the shop, uh, you hear a little ding, 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 ding of the bell above the above the door, um, and you are greeted by a heavy-set man who wears a moth-eaten jester's cap. Welcome, friends, to the house of Blinsky, where happiness and smiles can be brought at bargain prices. Perhaps you know a little child in need of a toy? A little toy for a girl or a boy? He has a little pet monkey that is currently perched on his shoulder, wearing a tutu. <laughs> and it kind of like jumps from shoulder to shoulder as you come in. Yes, uh, looking for a, a, a gift for a, a small boy, very young, very immature. He really wants very the strud. in the face. He wants the strud, boy. though. That's the one. Oh, that's one of my favorites. It took me a while to build it. And as you look around, there is just like, there is all kinds of toys on the wall. Stuffed toys, smaller kind of wooden figurines, marionettes, all that kind of stuff. All yeah. kind of plastering the walls. How uh, how long does it take you to make one of these dolls? Dolls is a long time. Sometimes uh, the smaller ones, sometimes a couple days, bigger ones maybe month. And how did you get the likeness of uh, Strad? So so. Oh we, uh, I mean he's just handsome man. I did my best from what I knew and from what I heard. And you look at it, um, and it doesn't quite look like Strahd. I mean, you know, it's got these like really like over exaggerated fangs and this really kind of gaunt, gaunt face with this slicked back hair. It doesn't quite look like Strahd. Because mm -hmm. yeah. you've met him. 
And you were his friend, actually, for a couple sessions. Not my choice. <laughs> but, but I have no idea. Like, Travassi no. got no idea. No, you think, it, um, yeah, you, you, you're pretty sure it's a spitting image. But but his face is, like, on the on the coins, on the book, isn't it? Is it or it's at least yep. on the coins? Yep. On, on, yeah, his profile is on the coins, yep. Uh, sorry, his uh, so the doesn't Cyrus like yeah, doesn't yeah, like like yeah, a lot like the coins. I feel like the co the official minted coins might be a more accurate representation. Yes, yes, he is. This this doll is definitely an exaggerated version of straw. Yeah. I imagine. I will wander over to it, looking at the shelves as if I want something else, uh, uh, and then I'm gonna look it over for a price tag. Yeah, so there is a price tag on it. Immediately, um, you see that. Every toy has a little tag on it that says "Is no fun, is no blinsky," uh, on it, and there's a little tag on the straw doll that says nine silver." What do you do? I uh, turn, turn Esmeralda. It's his. I'll say quietly. Yep. It says nine silver. I think that's not a very bad price, actually. You have nine silver. Uh, yes, I th I believe so. Yes, you do. Hey, if you want to pay full price, pay full price, but uh. But you said I should not. Uh, but no. How much Why would you do him? that when you could haggle? I don't right. know. Right. Do, how much would you say? Tell him you'll give him five. You do it. I don't want to do, no, do it. No, I'm not gonna do everything for you. I'm Hell. gonna spoon feed you. I'm not gonna. Or, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to like ease you into life lessons. I'm not gonna do it for you. Okay, Mister, Mister, uh, is uh, yes. Is, is that is that? Uh, are you the Blinsky? Of course. Don't I look like the Blinsky? This is my shop. Ah, oh, I had one toy when I was little without one arm. Uh, that was Blinsky. But here you are, and here I am. And maybe I would uh, pay you five silver for this dummy strad. Five? It says uh, nine silver. That is a very fair price. I don't want oh. to take any more because nine silver is the price, but I will not take any less. That's what I, I told her, but she said no way should you pay nine silver for this I just one. smack him try before <laughs> he like finishes his sentence. <laughs> Listen. And he, he lowers his voice and he kind of puts his arm around you and, and you can kind of, you get this kind of unpleasant body odor from him. And he says, listen, here for a minute, please. This place has seen better days. The Burgomaster, he was, uh, I believed in the happiness he wanted to bring. And now I don't know about my future. I can't give you a deal. I'm sorry, please. I have a, a business to run. Do you see many kids in here buying toys? No, because everybody's broke in this town. I just need to make some money. This is what I'm here for. Okay, 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 okay. I, I, I understand that you, uh, not business is not so good, but your craftsmanship is very impressive. So how about, does this come in a set? I see them, it's, see, I see this. Strad character standing next to some others here. Who are they? What are yes, these of course, the little ones. And you see these little, you know, the Dawnbringer toys, basically like stuffed, kind of sewn toys. And there's there's a bunch of them. Oh, those are my best sellers. Those are the Dawnbringers. Have you heard of them? They are amazing. They're heroes of Barovia. Really? Yes. Tell me, like I don't recognize some. Like who is the? I, I immediately pick up Esmeralda. I was like, what's it? I'd never seen this one before. Oh, she is the is the hero of the Vistani, but we can't talk about it in Velucky because they're not allowed in here. But she is amazing. She is a monster hunter. She almost killed Strad herself. I hear. Uh Travas <laughs> takes the Esmeralda doll. She's very famous. I'm surprised you have not heard of her. She is by far the best one in the whole group. How much for this one and the Strad? Oh, well, Strad's bigger. He's a ventriloquist dummy. You can make him talk and rah, rah, rah. All you do you want? The smaller ones? Those are only four silver each. How do you make him talk? You put your hand up his bum! <laughs> that would make anybody talk, I guess. I, do you want this? Uh, I want. Um, How much for how, the whole set? 
Oh, I will give you break on that one. Uh, I would say. What did I say? Four silver times five. Fifteen silver. Fifteen. Deal. 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 Okay. But what about, and then this, this is including Strad? No, is Strad is nine Strad? silver. He is a one of a kind. I, I don't have many. I only have one. Okay, and you can tell that Strad's like silver. up on a higher Nobody shelf. Nobody has silver here. Where do we get silver? 20 silver for the hole. There's 10 silver That's... and a gold, Dave. But, okay, but... <laughs> I read that there's actually no silver in Barovia because Strahd doesn't want you to have silver because you could make a weapon that could kill him. It's nice Kids. silver. <laughs> and that's why all the rewards are in, like, this other crappy currency that nobody ever uses, the ele Electrum. There's silver. The ele the, listen, the education the system here is not very good, as you can see. It's not very, I would have no not idea. A very bright I kid. didn't really go very far through it. Okay, are you going to uh, take it okay. or not? I have a place. I have all can these pay, people to sell things to. And he like points to the rest of his shop and there's nobody else here. He says, I'm <laughs> so busy. If you want to make the deal, I make the deal. Listen. Okay. Listen, I, I, I would like the Strad for sure, number one. Okay. I would like the Esmeralda because she is the most hero of all of them. Yes. And I would like the Muskoka because he obviously was number two best man. And... Um, <laughs> I would like uh, the maybe uh, I don't have enough for all of them, but maybe the the robot man and the heroic man, um, not the little one. Okay, let's go back to the rest of the party for a second. Actually, Esmeralda, if you can give me a perception check while we go back, real quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to ask him a few questions before. All right. So for the rest of you, you all come down uh, to the common area uh, to have breakfast, kind of around the same time and you all read the note that exists on the table that was left by Esmeralda. Um, what do you all do with that information? As soon as we go back to the rest of the party. Julian? <laughs> You'll just thus. I rolled a 16, by the way. Okay. Um, there we go. The rest of you, you get this note, what do you do? Uh... I don't know who uh, uh, Blinsky is, but I'm sure they'll be back in time for us to go do the mission. Um, Jay, have we heard of Blinsky in our travels before? Yes. So you know, uh, Rectavio told you that he gave his monkey to Blinsky. Um, and I don't know, I think you saw a couple toys through your travels that had the no, Blinsky, no fun, no Blinsky on it. Okay. Uh, yes, of course, he's a, he's a popular toy maker around here. I mean, I said we stick around until they get back and uh, try not to move too much. Otherwise, we may lose our, each other. Uh, how are you? Um, um, and I, like, point to my horns. Um, talk, I'm talking about you. How How is... Oh, how are you uh, settling? I mean, it's uh, very strange, I'm not going to lie. Um, fitting uh, in the bed with uh, with a headboard made of wood. <laughs> There's a few times where I got stuck and <laughs> could not turn because my horns were stuck in the soft uh, uh, in the softer woods. <laughs> so eh, I'm getting used to it, <laughs> you know. Like I like I said, um, they they're an inconvenience at first. Um, but you get used to them very quickly. Yours are a little different than mine, but mm. even when I got mine, um, well, to be fair, I got mine, uh, and then I was tortured, and then I was a goat. So I've been kind of learning uh, with you all. So, you know, it's fine. Uh, do you want to talk about it, or <laughs> should we move on? No. Well, I mean, I think it's common knowledge now that I was tortured by the druids. Yes, so, of course, um, you've mentioned it a few times. Um, um no. Okay. Um, yes. I was just mentioning that it, it, you, I believe that you can get used to it. If I could, even in the circumstances, um, I think you can too. 
I mean, here is what I am aware of, and that is that I have these skills that I kind of that come along with what I've changed into, and I would not lie. <laughs> they are kind of interesting to me, and I do not know exactly why I like them so much, but uh, yeah, things are things are very different now. If you had the chance, just we're playing a game. Um, if you say we, 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 we beat Strahd and we end the dream and everything goes back to what it was, would you want to stay the way you are or would you want to go back? That's a very good question. I, I am, I am, uh, I'm still getting used to it. You know, uh, I, I don't hate it. I do not love it yet. Uh, I'm still learning, and and uh, but you're helping. You're helping. It's very nice of you. Thank you for for asking. Um, I will. I don't know yet. I will leave it there, and perhaps uh, as I learn more, uh, I I I will be able to answer with more assurance. Okay, back to Blinsky's shop. Oh, okay. Um, Esmeralda. As you're standing, you kind of, with your 16, you look up onto one of the shelves and you see a very a distinct doll that looks a lot like Irina. Um, very, very clearly. And almost, a, not a spitting image, obviously, because it's a kind of sewn together doll, but it's the same style as the Dawnbringer dolls. Anyways, he says, so are we going to make a deal or not? Listen, I say 20 silver, two gold, for all of it. What do you say? All right, but uh, I, I remembered I have like a, my niece's birthday is coming up and I see this this doll over here. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, that one's not for sale. And you can see immediately kind of his countenance changes slightly. It's not for sale. Why do you have it up in your shop window? Uh, that was a special order. Uh, there was a guy who uh, asked for it to be made. Who? That is my business. He's my customer. You don't need to know who. What did he offer you for the doll? Persuasion check. Ah, oh, seven. Okay. He says... He kind of thinks about it, and you can tell he, he considers telling you, and then he says, it's okay. Don't worry yourself about that, but that one's not for sale. I can make you another, something different for you if you want. Maybe it looks like you, no. you're very beautiful. No, I think she'll like this one. Whatever this guy says, I'll double it. It is priceless. And you make him another one. It is priceless. There is no price you could pay. Why is that? Because you can tell there's fear kind of behind his words. You can hear his kind of voice tremble at the end of that sentence. Am I able to pick up on these cues as well? Perception check. Insight. I mean insight. 22. Okay. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh hmm. Why, why do you want this uh, doll so bad? Uh, uh, you. It's uh, just the doll. Uh, as Rielma. Uh, as Rielma. <laughs> I just look at him like I'm like, I'm going to freaking kill you later. Listen. A doll's a doll, yes? This person who commissioned this doll is not coming today. I give you double for this doll. You make one for them later. Has it has it been there a while? Can I take a look, closer look? Is it dusty? See, like, yeah. Yeah. It has been there for some time. You can tell it's not quite dusty, so it's maybe been there. I don't know, a couple weeks, you think, or something like that. But no dustier than the other dolls. What if he's scamming you? Making a doll and not coming back for it. He has not been here in a while, that it is true. I, he may not even be coming that? back, frankly. I, but I, I already am saying too much. I, 
You have to understand, this person is, um, listen. And he kind of comes close and he says, you have eyes of somebody I can trust. So I tell you this. He's not a nice man. He threatens me, doesn't pay for the doll. I give them the doll, he doesn't burn down my shop. That's it. It's very strange. I don't even know who this is. He makes it. He tells me what she looks like. I've made dozens of them for him. Dozens. You need help with this problem? <laughs> I don't know if you could help me with this problem. He's very, very powerful, has lots of friends, influence. Maybe not so much anymore, but he did. Who can this person be that you're a man such of your stature and your renowned uh, reputation can be so afraid of? Of course! I am the Blinsky! I am the only Blinsky! How can that someone no ever fun, no say... Blinsky. Persuasion check. All right. Woo! He says, listen. I haven't seen him. Nobody's seen him. He went missing. His name is Isaac Strasny. He's the right-hand man of the, the dog of the Boogermaster. I don't know why a man of his intelligence would ever hire somebody like him. But he comes here, he asks for this doll. Well, this looks like this woman. I make dozens, he says. I know pay, but I know burn your shop to the ground. But nobody has seen him. This has sat here for, I don't know, days. He usually comes every day almost to get one. When he says Isaac, when he says Isaac, I look over it. I give, I look over it to Ross. Mm -hmm. Do you know him? And he, no. Deception check. No, I don't know him. Uh, deception? Yeah. 22. He seems to buy it. No, don't know this man. But I'm very curious as to why he is commissioning so many dolls and extorting you. I don't know. This way. It doesn't matter. Do Anyways, are you going to take the dolls? They, the Dawnbringers, they are a limited edition. I don't know how long they're going to be alive. So, you know, some people say they're really great. I've never seen them. People don't last in Barovia very long. I mean, they have this one here. He's made of metal. Maybe he rust in time. I don't know. But do you want them or not? Yes, take yes, the dolls. yes, yes. We would like them. I will okay. buy them. Two gold. Thank you. And the monkey, uh, he, po I... he points up and the monkey jumps off his... <laughs> and kind of like climbs all along and grabs the straw doll and carries it back and sits on his shoulder and holding it. I uh, actually give... Tra I... Sorry. Oh, uh, I, I give Travas a gold piece just to... Because I'm uh, being a mom. Okay. And Thank he you. have to buy all of it. Okay. That's great. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, uh, this monkey, uh, is, is, uh, is a monkey a common animal in Barovia? You've never Are seen they one. hopping through all the trees? You've never seen him. What the never strad is that animal? What is Where did you get to this? Where did you get this animal? Uh, it was a gift from a good friend of mine. Very, very close. And like I would know, would I dog. know this? Yeah, so you remember I... that Rectavio said that he gave the monkey to, mm. to Blinsky. His name is Piccolo. Piccolo, that's really cute. And when he says his name, he like, <laughs> scratches his butt. Uh, who, and, uh, you, who, who did you say gave this to you? Where did you get this from? The great Rectavio gave it to me. It's a gift. He just gave it. He said, here, here's a monkey. I said, thank you. It was great. Is this a man about town, or are we can? Of course, you don't know Rattavio. He's very famous. At that point, mm -hmm. uh, the bell rings, and you see a, a Barovian woman, kind of down on her luck, with a little boy who comes in, wide-eyed, and looking around. Uh, 
At this point, he says, okay, okay, listen, I have other customers. Here you go. Please, you can come back. And he hands you the, he takes the gold, and he hands you the, um, the straw dummy and the Dawnbringer dolls. Nice. Bundle them all up. Do you have a bag? Uh, <laughs> he reaches under, and he gives you a sack. Nice. All right, so I'll put them all in the sack. Uh, and then on the way out, I will tell the mom. Don't pay the full price for anything. He will give you a deal. <laughs> okay. You leave. Esmeralda, you follow? I do. Okay. All right. You guys head back to the Blue Water Inn? Yeah, but I want to ask her, why are you telling him we don't know anything? <laughs> because the whole point of us dressing differently is just for us not to draw attention to ourselves. You don't know okay. who he knows and who he talks to? That's right. Okay. Fine. You walk in through the doors of the Blue Water Inn and you see the rest of your party sitting at the table um, just having a conversation. Um, you can have a brief conversation if you like and then we'll kind of fast forward to evening. Are we Are we doing this? Uh, when are we doing this again? Everyone here? We're just waiting. Oh, yes. Ah, there, there, there you are, Travis and Esmeralda. Uh, we, so, how was your day? Travis was wanted to go amazing. to a toy store. Amazing! I'm going to sit down and start unpacking everything. And I'm going to start, I don't know how to use a marionette. No idea. Da, 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 look! Well, it's, 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 a, it's a ventriloquist dummy, so it talks like this. I thought and they were marionettes. The I thought they were all, no. I thought they were all. No. I thought this, only Strahd was the dummy. Yeah, Strahd is the dummy. The others are just small, like, um, cloth dolls. Not like marionettes? I feel a little ripped off at this point. Yeah, no. They're not all marionettes. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll give, give, give Falfer his. But I can keep the rest. Uh, and I'm going to pull out Strahd. Yeah. Uh, my name is Strahd. Ha, ha, ha. I want oh, some food. Then they start, start like eating the food on the table with the straw. <laughs> this doll is very Happy clearly now. not anatomically correct. <laughs> no horns! Uh, and I'm not sure that I could fit my arm this far as well. <laughs> he did mention something though while we were there. There was an Irina doll that he wouldn't sell me. Really? And apparently, commissioned by Isaac, the missing Isaac, that we didn't who comes tell him in, about. who comes in, does not pay for anything, has these dolls commissioned, and says, "Oh, this for me, and I won't burn your building down." Really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> What would he want with an Irina doll? And apparently he takes a lot of them. Every couple of weeks. Mm hmm Very curious. Don't know who He's... Irina is. Ah, she was one of Strahd's um, desires, no? Am I wrong? That's weird. Mm -hmm. Okay, the afternoon passes. And you take your time just kind of taking it easy until darkness sets and Muriel walks in through the door of the Blue Water Inn to greet you. I would like to examine this this dummy a bit once oh, we get Jesus. to his room. <laughs> I think you've examined it enough. <laughs> there, there's nothing like, there's nothing fishy. I mean, I mean, visually inspect no. this It seems like a, like a it's mundane a dummy. Pure, straight up just a dummy. straight up dummy. Nice. All right. I walk in. Hi, I have some. What are you doing with that doll? He's right, examining I'm it. I'm hungry. <laughs> and I, I imagine at this point you guys are in your room, kind of packing and getting ready, and Travas is still playing <laughs> with the straw dummy. Well, yeah, now I know what you were doing all day. Okay, that's not creepy at all. Um, I found out some pretty interesting information, at least for our event tonight 
uh, the lady Fiona Vachter is not going to be at the house. She does not stay there. So it is very possible there will not be anybody on the second floor. I don't want to count on it, but it was good news at least. But something was there if there was a big power surge thing. Hmm. That is true, but it's possible that could be an automated thing or just a trick oh, of the light or something. It was a Perhaps. part of my dream. I don't think it was... I think it made... I don't dream things that don't um, come into play later. Hmm. There was a Feywild historian named Chekhov, um, and he said basically that you don't really mention things if... Um, they don't aren't or if they aren't important so perhaps we will find evidence of this flash on that floor maybe so i thought it was still good news at least we won't have to deal with lady doctor just the electricity yes mm. the flash mm. okay well Seeing as we have a plan and we have each other, uh, I do not see why we would not uh, pursue this um, as soon as the sun goes down. Once we get there, what's the order we are taking going up into the window? Well, Perhaps. first things first, across the street, I will leave my token just as a backup plan, as mentioned. And then I would not mind being at the back of the party, uh, seeing as my ranged weapons are better served from back there. I have to be somewhere in the middle. Um, my power to conceal, uh, um, you have to be within a radius. And that'll help at least with getting around quietly. And that also will help me be able to see more, uh, just in case um, the guard comes around um, I can do what I do so Ravas and I can lead I should probably go last I can lift you Falfer but with my weight I would not want to destroy uh, whatever it is we are trying to climb hmm. fair enough uh, I would I would lift you myself as well as the last person down but that does not make physical sense I will go after Esmeralda. I would rather be towards the front anyway. That's okay. so. That's our marching order, I guess. Jay, okay. marching order. Okay. Yeah, well, I'll deal with that when we when we arrive. Can I get stealth checks from everyone, please? Sure. Mm. Hold on. How long does this last? Natural it's thirty. Uh, quick question. Yes. Um, how long does it take to get to the Burgomaster's Mansion? Oh, like less than five minutes. Okay, that would have cast Patch Without a Trace. Okay. Um, beforehand. So add 10 so, to that. Add 10 to your rolls, y'all. Thank you so nice. much, because I rolled a nine. <laughs> That's 26. 40 for me. 40. That is a 36 for me. Wow. That's a oh, 25. 19. 15. And Rogue fun. Still, Woo. still pretty good. <laughs> Still mm. pretty good. All right. I rolled a two. Wow. Okay. All right. Um, you all start to head down the street as darkness sets over the town of Velaki. Things start to quiet down. People start to shutter their windows. Don't like to be outside during the night, except for the blue water. Um, you arrive at the Burgermaster's Mansion, as mentioned before. Uh, the mansion's walls plastered stone that display many scars where the plaster has fallen away from age and neglect. Drapes cover every window, including a large arched opening above the mansion's double entrance doors. As expected, you see two guards at the front, you see two guards at the back, and you see one guard circling the premises. What do you do when you arrive? Looks exactly like last night. <laughs> uh... We need to hide. We need to hide in the woods and wait for the guard to go past. It's the same guard going around every five minutes? Um, no, it actually looks like a different guard. Uh, but he's going about the same same timing. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. And 
sorry, there's a street, the main street that goes along, and then there's no streets kind of on the side. Uh, on the north side of the building, there's two trees, and then there's gardens in the back of the, of cool. the mansion. I will place the token at that vantage point that the image that you have okay. basically is, is created right. at. So same perspective. Okay. You, you pull out your fingernail, still very kind of creeped out by it, and you place it in the corner of, of an adjacent building kind of carefully, kind of making sure that nobody sees you do it. And as we approach, uh, I want to take a close look at all the windows, what windows are lit and what are not. Yes. Um, so it appears on the south side of the building, um, there, all four windows are lit um, on the second floor. Uh, none of the windows on the, on the ground floor are lit. Um, and from the front, you can see that... Uh, the two windows at the uh, in the attic area are not lit, and they weren't before. You just saw that flash, but right now they're dark. That's what you can but, see from this vantage. But there are lit windows on the second floor. On the second floor, yeah. Mm. The window that I looked in the night before is it lit or dark? As you all again with your crazy stealth, kind of circle the building, um, it is dark. And it is the only window on the second floor. The two windows on the ground floor are also dark. Yeah. On that same uh, side. All right. Uh, different situation today. Do you want to try to go through the ground floor so we don't have to climb the rope? Aren't there guards, though, inside the house? That the point of Wasn't going the... upstairs is so we avoid okay. the first floor entirely. I yeah. was just asking. No troubles. Uh, as you say that, as Morelda, give me a, a perception check. Nineteen. Yeah, with the nineteen, you as you say, aren't there guards in the top floor? You say a silhouette pass the the first window, then the second window, then the third window, then the fourth window, almost like it's passing is, down a hallway in the second floor. That is definitely a guard. On the second floor, though. Yes. Oh, you said on the second floor? Yes. Or the, the on second the opposite floor? side of the of the window that Travas wanted to go in. Mm. So on the second floor, there's four windows on the south side. Those are lit, and you saw somebody pass. On the north side, there's only one window, and it's dark, which was the teenager's bedroom. If we should stick to the north side. <laughs> yes. Are we still okay. going in the second floor, though? We're still going in the kids' Room. Yeah, I think st stick to the plan going in through that door because or that window because it's not lit. But there are guards on this floor on the other side. Okay. Uh, I will. Uh, <laughs> I wait for the guard to make sure that he's he's rounding the corner, so I have the ma most amount of time. Okay. And then I will. Um, Attempt to climb to the second floor. Okay, give me a athletics check, please. Ooh, or acrobatics 19. if you want to parkour a bit more than than actually strengthen it. Well, I went with my plus zero athletics and I got a nineteen. So okay, so yeah, <laughs> so you just you strong arm it. You you basically climb straight up to the window. You yeah. look in the window. Same thing that you saw the the evening prior. Yeah. Uh, can I try to, uh, I would like to, ex I don't know, examine the window just, just for any wires or traps on it. Yep. Not, not the investigation wood, check, please. I don't really want to fall from that height. Uh, oh, 14. Okay. Um, with a 14, uh, you notice that the hinges on the, are on the outside. So it's, it appears like they open out. Um, but there is no visible latch or handle on this side but it is absolutely locked. Doesn't appear to be trapped. It's locked. Is there is there any opening to get a tool through the cracks to try to yeah. unlatch it? There's a there's a thin opening. Yeah. That you could maybe try and Yeah, I'd like to try to use okay. my uh thieves tools to try to wiggle something through the through the gap yeah. and open the latch. So you just need to do a, a thieves tool check please with your with your tool proficiency how do i do that so you're going to roll your d20 and then you're going to add your tool proficiency to it you should have a proficiency bonus with thieves tools 
Yeah, I think we had this conversation before, and I was like, eh, I don't know how to do this. And then the chat was like, here's how you do it. Helpful spot for the chat to jump in. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to roll my D21 first. Yeah, so your, your, your proficiency is two, two at this point. It's not three yet, right, guys? My proficiency is, is three. <laughs> three. Three. It's three now? Okay. So three yeah, plus your dexterity, a... I believe, plus your D20. Okay. That's 25. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, with the 25, you slip uh, one of the straight things through, and you start to, and you, it's a fairly easy latch, and you manage to latch it up. Okay. Um, you all watch as Travas kind of goes up the building um, and he kind of disappears around one of the trees and then you don't know where he goes. The problem is tra past one of the traces only within how how far? 30 feet. 30? So I don't, how high is he? Yeah. I'm, I'm, not, so, I'm not too worried. I have a 30 without it. Yeah, okay. So so you are all, I'm assuming, kind of around, around the, uh, the base of, a, of the tree on one side. It's kind of the only sort of area that you could be um, hidden. Uh, and so he's just outside of that 30-foot space uh, because he's over and up um and you guys watch the guard kind of come around and then circle again not noticing travas travas the, the window is now unlatched latched what do you do okay I'll, i'm gonna open it up and 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 jump in to the okay. room is that is there anybody in there I think, yeah nobody's it in there it appears right? to be empty um the room is dark and the door to the room inside is closed. Again, you see a handsomely appointed room containing a canopied bed, a low bookshelf, and a full-length mirror in a wooden frame on the wall across from the door. Set into the north wall is an arched window of leaded glass. At this yeah. point, we can transition to our map. Map time. Map hey. time. Map time. <laughs> That was in a second. Maniacal. That, was, that was great, Joel. Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. Are we transitioning to the map? Or yeah, we are. Julian's on? just... Okay. <laughs> Julian might be into the board that tonight. <laughs> there we go. All right. So you are... Um, oh, I see. Currently in that room there. You've come through the window. And there is a, a, a bed right in front of you. There is a, a side table here. Uh, and yeah. there is a door leading out to your right. Yeah. Okay. I I, uh, I take out my rope because I'm gonna tie it to to the bed. But uh, but first I'm gonna check those drawers in the night table. Okay. Uh, I'd like to just check for a trap first and then okay. open. Okay. Investigation it. check. Uh, sixteen. Okay. Uh, with a sixteen, you take a cursory kind of thorough look through the room. Uh, even the the drawers and stuff, nothing really of value in here. The clothing, okay. um, some knickknacks, things like that, but nothing of value and no traps. Knickknacks. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll leave the knickknacks alone. Uh, I, I'm gonna tie a rope. Uh, I'm gonna tie my rope around oh, uh, around one of the legs. Okay. And I, I want to. I'm gonna look out <clears throat> uh, to 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 my friends out there. Yep. Kind of. Wave to them from inside the window. Okay. Uh, and I'll wait until the guard passes by again. Okay. And then I'll drop the rope down. Okay. All right. The rest of you see Travas kind of make himself known to you. Uh, and you uh, quickly after that see a rope drop from the window. Go, go, go. I'm going to take that rope. Okay. So give me that... Um, give me that... Um, Marching order, and as you do, give me athletics checks, please. You know what? Okay. If you have a rope, you don't need an athletics check. Just give me your marching order. Oh, I was going to go next. Okay, so Esmeralda, you up and in. And then I'm next. Okay. Muriel, up and in. Who's I up? am next, but I actually tell Falfer and or Sterling to go, just in case... Okay. The guard around is walking. Okay. Yeah, I want to. I want to think think about the timing of the guard. Okay. If if it seems like he's coming back, I want to wave to them to like wait. Okay. Give me an insight check, please. Um. And though, who's the next person to go? That would be me. Uh, Falfer, can you give me so a perception check? Perception check. Yeah. Um. Yes. With looking around the room, Travas, you think maybe it's another thirty seconds or so before he comes back around. It's a fourteen. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, with a 14, you're about to go, Falfer, and then you see the I'm... guard rounding the corner. Okay. Um, so I, I will retreat back into my stealth mode? Or yep. stealth? Yeah, you just kind of yeah. step back into the shadows of the tree. Does it yeah. seem like he notices that anyone is here? He's just rounded the corner and he's okay. coming up. He hasn't he... noticed anything yet. Okay. Is, there, is this rope in the shadows? It, or is it it's like pretty anybody visible. would see this? It, yeah, I, I will quickly pull the rope okay. up. You retract the rope really, really quickly. The guard saunters by, turns the corner, and continues around the other corner. I drop the rope again. Okay. And Falfer, you're up. Up and in. And Who's I'm next? Out of the way. Uh, I look at Sterling go. Go. Okay. I so. can watch your back sometimes, too. Seeing Sterling come, yeah, I'm going to uh, jump on the bed and like wave yeah. everybody. To, Just like, as you the do, bed the bed goes <clears throat> closer to the to the window as it shifts. The rest of you kind of pile on and start to hold the bed, and you can feel it mm -hmm. kind of shifting a bit. But he's able to get up and in with all of you kind of holding down the bed. Okay, I will. I will um, have Sterling. I just whisper to Sterling. Sterling on the bed. Just so that there's no chance that it pulls noggins as he as he is a heavier character as well. Right. Pull it no, down. I'm okay. I'm medium. Um, okay. But uh, and seeing that he's up and I just kind of wait to make sure nothing else is coming, then I run and I, I think do like a giant leap yep. into um, um, what's this called? The rope. Yeah. Climb it up. Okay. Get inside. All right. You're inside. We noggins makes it in carefully. Um, and currently right now, you don't hear much. It is quite quiet right now in the mansion, uh, especially at this floor. Um, what do you do? I want to uh, take a quick look around because we're under the assumption that this is the sun's room. And I remember, I think, Noggin saying that if we had something of the sun, we could po he could possibly find him. Yeah. So is there anything that is obviously of a personal effect of this kid yeah like lots of things clothing um little knickknacks um an ink and pen set blankets like anything you imagine would be in a teenager's room uh is there a piece of clothing that looks like it's been worn more recently than others um no it's actually quite tidy in here and it actually appears like this room hasn't been used in some time um, I'll grab a piece of clothing that seems like something, you know, not a formal wear piece. Yeah. Something like that would be just day to day. And I'll kind of hold it up uh, and point to it at Noggins and cock my head and give a, would this work? Um, probably, yeah, as long as it's theirs. Uh, and I'll take I'll it head. and hold it. Yep. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, grab it and just keep it with me. Um, okay, um, the spell is still up. Just still be careful. It's not foolproof. Um, I will actually, um, like to be a little closer to the front, um, because now we can run into someone versus them seeing us. Um, and I'm, I have good night. I have good eyes and ears. Is there any light coming in from under the door or is it dark in the hallway outside? Um, you see the the faintest of glows coming from under the door. So there isn't okay. light immediately out, outside the door. Is there any sound coming from outside the door? Perception check. Oh, 10. You don't hear anything. Okay. Uh, Jake, I'm assuming... a quick question. Yep. So this is one of the... Uh, the two that had gone missing, right? Um, this is the son. So there's three, the lady in waiting, the butler, and the son have all been missing since for a couple days now. Now three days. Does the room look like somebody had left without taking anything or does it look like somebody had planned on leaving? Give me a uh, investigation check. Okay. Rolled a seven. I'm not rolling digital dice anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, so with a seven, 
Um, you get the same sense that Muriel got, which is that nothing has been moved or used in here for it appears longer than even three days ago. Like there is a <laughs> fine line of dust on mostly everything in here. Um, yeah. That's right. the sense you get. Um, pull the windows shut. Okay. Pull the window shut. I want to cross all of my eyes and dot my teeth, you know? <laughs> I will I will step forward a little bit and um, get to the door, press my ear to it. Okay. Um, does it sound like anybody's walking by? Yeah, perception check. Oh, F! Uh, I'm not rolling digital dice either today. <laughs> I have not rolled over a five this entire time. This is bad. 12. Okay. With a 12, uh, you hear footsteps, um, the creak of footsteps. It doesn't sound immediately on the other side of the door. It sounds somewhat distant. But you imagine on this floor. And you said there is light coming from underneath or no? Yeah, dull, dull, dim light. Dull so light. distant okay. light. Um, and I'll, so I'll say we are trying to get to the Burgum, the, the, the burger, the burger mister's room. That's what I said. Okay. Um, and we know that. Do we know exactly which room it is? No. Looking at my notes. Okay. No. Well, uh, we're gonna have to kind of just um, go through and find stuff. Did it only? Did it seem on like only one pair of footsteps upstairs? Yes, all you hear is one set of footprints, footsteps. Okay. Then I say, I have a plan. Um, when they get past, I'm going to attempt to do what I do because if we have to be upstairs, we can't always dodge them. So it might be useful, but it might not work. So just be on your guard. Okay. Um, Mary you know, pulls out a, a rapier and holds it at her side. Uh, I'll wait for a moment because I have a passive of 18. I'll wait for a moment when it seems like the steps are barely just passing the door. Okay. And as them, they... Yeah, you hear them just passing the distance and it sounds like they're getting quieter again. So they get loud for a second and they're getting quieter again. Okay, and as that happens, I open the door very softly, okay. uh, very slowly. Okay. Um, and as I do... I will look at the individual um, and I'll point my uh, sickle towards them. Um, and it's almost as if I'm like penetrating like a, a thought bubble that they might be having. Okay. Um, and I'll kind of tug at it and hold it for a second as I cast Charm Person. Okay. So as you come through the door, you expect to do what you just said. Oh, um, no. But, I, I <laughs> but as you step through, um, you notice that you're in a smaller hallway as you peer down the hall. Down the hall, there is two doors that lead into other rooms. Uh -huh. There is one door back here that leads into a room. Uh, so two doors ahead of you on the on the opposite wall, one door to the left, and then there's an end of the hallway at the end, and you hear the footsteps down that hall. So the the individual so was not in the hallway that that. I, I will. I mean that that's fine, but yeah. I will say I was trying to aim it as he walked past the door, so I could see him walking. Yeah, but he he didn't walk past your door. He walked past the hallway at the end. Oh, uh, okay, okay. So, that so it makes more sense. It sounded like he was walking past our door specifically. Yeah, no, no. I said it was distant. Um, okay. So it, it 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 sounds like he has passed this opening and and is going this way. You can even see shadow kind of filtering in as he walks past. Noted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, then, kind of retroactive because I I think yep. I guess misinterpreted yep. that. Um, uh, I will come out of the area and I'll kind of sneak forward. Um, okay. To uh, get a better vantage point. Okay. Now that you're all season. now that you're all inside the the mansion, can I get um, stealth checks again, please? From Pass without a trace still up. Yep. Uh huh. For a while. That's much better. Twenty four. Okay. Thirty four. That is a natural twenty. Um, wow. For a thirty plus ten, it's my turn for a forty. <laughs> nice. nice. <laughs> I got a nat 20 points. as well, but for 27. Hey. Wow. wow. And 32 for me. Wow. Let's go, y'all. 
That's great. We disappear. All right. A trace. So yeah, so Noggins, you head up this way, uh, and as soon as he walks out, he doesn't even make a sound. Like as he's walking, you don't even hear sound from his footsteps. Noggins, you make it kind of to the end of the hallway, we'll say. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> your mini doesn't fit in this sh- short hallway. Um, mm-hmm. And as you kind of peer around, you look down mm-hmm. the way and you see a um, a guard walking down this way. But you, what you've noticed now that you're a little closer to the guard, and the guard is maybe 20 feet down this hall, this uh, end hallway. And mm-hmm. what you notice is that he's dressed um, not like a city guard. You can tell that these are kind of hired uh, maybe mercenaries or, or just strongmen uh, who mm-hmm. seem a lot more adept than a typical city city guard would be. Um, he Brown. wears a cloak down the back and he carries a mace in his hand as he kind of mm-hmm. walks down this way. Uh, no, no mace in his hand. It's on his belt. Um, but he's walking down the hallway. Oh, wait. Okay. Well, Do the rest still... of you follow down that hallway? Um, Behind Noggins? You said that there were other doors in this Yes. Uh, side hallway? Yeah, so there's there's one back uh, across from the door that you were, and then there's two leading into other rooms. I think I would go to the door across. Yep. I'm not going to open it yet, okay. but I'm going to stand there and be be ready and also be listening. Okay. I would actually tell them to stay back as well, because okay. this is a potentially won't go well, and they haven't been made yet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sorry. So, uh, Muriel, just a quick question. Did you want to go uh, back to the door that is back here? Or did you want to go into one of the doors that are further down the hallway? I want to put you up on um, Since Noggins has asked us to stay back, I'll stay go. towards that back door. Okay. But I do want to be out in the hall by the door. Okay. So, also, I can listen in case someone comes is coming from there. And also, so I'm a little bit closer in case things go badly. Good. Okay. Uh, I'd also like to, to be at one of the doors. So, whatever... One comes next. Well, there's two we that down the hallway. There's two that are, are literally like across from each other, so you can be between those two doors here. Yeah, I would. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll try the one on the left. I, I can see there's a bed in it, but yeah, that one. You're good. You can't see there's a bed in it, David. That's yeah, metagaming. No, well, I'm trying. I'm trying to think like, oh, what door? What side of the hallway would he go on if he couldn't see? Yeah. The so there's a, the, room heading down the, the hall. There's a door to the left and a door to the right, right across from each other. Yeah, so I'll go. I'll go to the left. Okay. And, do you, what do you um, do? Do you try the door? I, I'm gonna listen for a minute. Okay, you as hear well at the door before yeah. trying okay. the door. Perception check. Oh, and again, I'm trying to do what I'm doing before we do anything. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll, 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 I'll let <laughs> yeah. him do that. Like he's trying to get I, this just in yeah. case yeah. he comes back while we're working. Yeah. 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 I'm just listening and waiting. Yeah. This is all happening kind of at the same time as you were walking down the hallway. I'm just trying to get what everybody else is doing. Gotcha. While you did that. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. 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 Yeah. Anybody else making I'm any moves? I'm listening. I don't want to be anywhere. Like I want to give Noggins space to do what he's doing, but yeah. I don't want to be too far away that if anything goes awry. Okay that I won't be able to react. Okay. Um, but I would like to start a, is a, a blade song doesn't actually make any noise, point of clarification. I've never actually thought about this before. Right. Right? Yeah, I believe, no, I don't believe no, it does. No sound? I'm not really, cool. I'm not, unless it's somebody else is more. It doesn't say it, versed. I was just like. No. It would be flavor if you did, it yeah. is not actual singing. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think it was, but I just, for point of clarification, yes. for this situation, <laughs> yes. want to make sure that this is quiet. Yes. Uh, but I would like to start a blade song. Okay. It's actually more about sword play and dance anyway. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so, Noggins, the character is 20 feet down this hallway. What do you do? As you. Am I hearing... Violin music, or this yeah, that's else? just the music from the okay, from the. I was like, wait, <laughs> it's it just totally it's mood music, music like, from the like Burgomaster's two, 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 mansion. Second. There's not actually music happening. <laughs> oh my god, I was having a moment. Oh, uh, cool. Um, you know what? This yeah. is. You often hear music on your own. <laughs> yeah, I don't hear anything. What are you oh, talking about? Right. His guard has a boombox, and he's just <laughs> listening to a string quartet as he wanders the hall. He's just got his yeah. Yeah. outside the window. Here, yep. that's better. Uh, okay. Uh, Deal with it. Yeah, I will. Um, as I look back and see them just prepping, I go. I, I'll, I will note. I will nod at them, and then I will see the individual and attempt to charm them. Okay. Um, we are not fighting, so it's a straight roll. Mm-hmm. Yep. Saving throw. 
Oh yeah, I almost got. It. That's a wisdom saving throw. Yes, sir. That is a natural one. Whoa. Good. So uh, as you what, watch, you, you uh, what does that look like when you cast that noggins? So when I cast it, if if you like look at it from like a um, a theatrical standpoint or a cinematic standpoint, I'll say, um, as I pierce this mold, this this molt of a dream that I can see forming. Um, they kind of just stop for a second, yep. and then the world around them becomes what it is, yeah. but just slightly different. Okay. It's like wobble, almost like Inception in a way. Okay. And I look and I and I go, hey, hey, um, me and my friends were just walking around. Keep doing your guard duties. Um, we won't get in your way. Okay. And immediately the guard turns towards you at the voice, and as soon as he sees you, he, you can see that his. His shoulders kind of soften a little bit as he looks at you and he kind of almost smiles like he recognizes you but is trying to kind of tell where from. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, I know you're my friend but I'm trying to remember exactly where we met before. Um, and and, the, and the, guard, the guard looks at you and he kind of nods and he says, there is not supposed to be anyone else here. Where did you I come know, from? I, I know, we had to um, <clears throat> get, around the, get around the way a little bit. Um, just again, we won't bother you whatsoever. Uh, I know your duties are very important. So, uh, we, we, you have more people here? Yes, no. Well, I say we, the proverbial we, um, it's just kind of weird. Um, but just be, be real, you know, do what you do. Oh, all, all, uh, all right. Um, I might, I might, I might, you might see other people that are friendly, um, just like me. Um, just, don't don't be alarmed. Uh, there might be uh, a robot. Well, a robot. There might be a metal person. Uh, um, um, a couple of people, but you might not even see them. But there's honestly. not supposed to be anybody uh, in here. Uh, I I know, friend. I know. But I'm telling you to trust me. Okay. He says. Okay, it's been a long time, but. I will get you your favorite fruit. Food. You know I will. Oh yes. I know how much it's oh, it's hard not to find in being Barovia. a guard. Uh, yeah, I know, right? Right. Exactly. What, like, what what is that favorite? I, I haven't had it in so long. Have you ever had a <laughs> spider's leg? Yes, you've had a spider's leg. Oh yes, it's, it's very it's very really tasty. Yes. I, I quickly mm -hmm. rummage yes. through my bag and pull <laughs> one out and start like trying to pass it to like to, to I noggins. Guess, the I guess, like I, I I hold it back and go. You do a round, and when I see you come back around, I'll get you some food. As you kind of grab it, it squishes because it's probably like a week and a half dead. Uh, and the smell <laughs> that kind of emanates down the this I, hallway. The minute I have it, I guess like I grimace and yeah. immediately that's like potpourri. Yeah, I like has Druid craft. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. And the guard says, okay, I'll trust you, but please don't get me in trouble. I would never get you in trouble. Okay. And he turns around and he keeps walking up this way. And as I as he walks, I turn back to the group and go, "We have about um, that word that you used, Falfer, about an hour, and then he's going to know that he's no longer in a dream, and he's going to really hate me. So let's do this." Mm. And he starts downstairs at the end of this hallway. At the very end of the far hall, he heads down a a, a, a narrow flight of stairs. Okay. All right. Let's start looking. Okay. Where are you guys going to head first? Are, are we alone? Does, does it seem like we're alone up here now? The only... I mean... All, the only person you were aware of was the guard. Right. Right now, but you don't there hear there were lights else. on the other side. No, so. and the light was coming from torch sconces or, or lanterns along that long hallway. But that appears to be the only light in the place. Okay. In this one. Okay, this so do those windows look into the hallway then? These windows look outside. But yes, oh, I see. this I is see. this is a long hallway that faces the outside, the north okay, so uh, the there south side of the, the building. Other side, all yeah. the rooms are on one side. Yeah, this is Got the north it. side you came through, the south side. That's why they were lit is because there's lanterns in the hallway. Yeah, I will open that door and go in. The one on the left. Okay. Yeah. Um you go to open it and it's locked. <sighs> I think I might think of stool. Okay. And uh 
All right. And I know how to do that again because we just did that. Yeah. Uh, it's my proficiency plus dex. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. 16. Okay. With a 16, you kind of, it takes you a little bit longer, but you hear the clack of the, of the lock as it opens. Yeah, we'll uh, open the door. Okay. Dolls. This room is full of pretty little dolls with powder white skin and auburn hair. Some of them dress beautifully, others plainly. Some of the dolls fill a long bookshelf and others are arranged in neat rows on walls mounted as shelves. Still, others are piled atop a bed and a heavy wooden chest. What's most odd is that all of the dolls, apart from their clothing, look the same. They all look like Irina Koliana. And that is where we're going to end the session for this evening. Oh, 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 oh that is so extra so creepy. creepy. Yeah, yes. Why don't, you just, why don't you just like throw a torch in there and close that door and let it burn? <laughs> just and, nope and, out and of we'll there. just nope out of the, yep, yep. <laughs> yeah. We'll go back to our friend and be like, I'm, I'm sorry, but it was like, Dolls. It was too late. The yeah, yeah, too many dolls. Fire. We I'm were, sorry. We didn't see anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. someone dropped yeah. a candle. Yeah, was... <laughs> yeah. Velaki screwed. We're out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Just, just keep with our tradition of burning a place before we leave. <laughs> Thank you Seems for to be the theme. <laughs> Thank you for joining us tonight, everyone. If you liked what you saw, consider uh, uh, subscribing on YouTube and, of course, hitting that bell icon so you can get notified. Follow us on Twitch um, as well. Uh, it was a great episode, a fun episode, a slower kind of role play episode, but they're great. They're fun. I love these sort of uh, character heavy sort of episodes. And you guys finally got to Blinsky's, which uh, is a big, obviously, moment within Barovia. Um, make sure that you catch us on Thursday night for Aftermath. I spoke to Lauren, and I think we're moving slower than we expected. So uh, you're going to join us for one more session. Is that right? Next Monday? I, I got you for one more session. Yes. Yep. Thank you, Lauren. I'll Thank be here you. next week. Yep. So you and Adam will be back next week. Um, it will be a full table. And so we're very much looking forward to it. We have one more session of Muriel with us. Uh, and I just want to thank you so much for joining us. It's been such, a, such an honor and such a uh, blessing to have you. It's Thank you, everyone. Pleasure. We will see you Thursday, and then we will see you Monday for episode four of season four of Into the Mist. See you guys. Bye.